Okay, so hello everybody in video land. This is Courage and Chaos. This is Dungeons and Dragons for Absolute Beginners. Uh, these people here have just started D&D from scratch. About five, this is I think episode five. Uh, and the main thing here is teaching D&D. So I specialize in doing that. This is generic D&D so that they're ready to go to any DM or start DMing themselves. Or if you Courage or hearing some people who are <laughs> starting to dabble with DMing is no, it's really a fine time to do. Uh, and people in, in uh, but there's a lot of people when I teach of uh, this case, they start DMing, you know, before this whole season is, is up. So uh, definitely consider it. Um, so yeah, I just really love having people learn D&D &D, uh, and have a good first experience uh, and to get people more to fall in love with the whole practice. So this goes for you. If you there's anything that confuses you, if you want to correct anything or whatever else, help each other learn the rules, look at each other's sheets. Uh, if you want to ask me a question, it's always okay to stop if you're confused because it might not be just you that's fixing something that's confusing. Also, people watching the video might get it cleared up or you demonstrate to DMs I like to model DMs. It's okay to stop the action to answer questions. You know, the whole—it's all about you getting a good start. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are going to continue uh, there. One mission goal I just want to remind people of is—and this session is a good illustration. I want to expose you to different kinds of D&D. So you know, D&D is many games within a game. Different DMs have different styles. So I'm going to show you something where what's a session style that doesn't have a lot? It doesn't really have crunchy uh, uh, by the book combat but it still has a lot of interesting sort of plot progressions and discoveries. So it's more sort of talking, discovering, and investigating, but you're an active, you know, interactive participant. There's some combat in here, but it's at a more abstract level. So we'll demonstrate different kind of combat. So there's a few things I wanted to show you. And it's okay if you don't like it. It just gives you a, a vocabulary to say, well, next time you go to a DM, you can say, oh, I really liked this thing that Matt did, or I really hated this thing that Matt did, so I want to do more or less of that in my own game. So I just want to give you a vocabulary. Different D&D experiences. Now, so you decide there's no point going back to the farms, because if they're going to get destroyed by these goblin raids, uh, you know that the goblins, you know now, the goblins are coming from where you are, the Caves of Chaos. Uh, they are streaming to the north, going to those farm towns that were your original destination. They do all the killing and stuff that goblins usually do, but they're bringing back machines, machinery, and they dump this machinery with the kobolds. Your kobolds were the ones that, that were your captors until a little while ago. The kobolds turn those machines, they break them down, and turn them into mining machines. They are part of a mining operation. And what they're mining is chaos shards. It's uh, maybe some sort of rock that involves maybe rock or ore. But you know that there are these little blobs of black metal, and you have some of these things now, that are called chaos shards. And they're very valuable to various people. So you know there's a, there's a big, uh, important operation that makes the kobolds a lot of money. And they're eager to make money uh, for reasons you might remember. So they are part of this big operation using this machinery. One way these shards are used is they can be made to glow uh, a color. If, they wear them, if you wear them around your chest, as you're doing right now, around your neck, if you pump them with emotion, they start to glow a color with that emotion. And that makes them, it's called ripening the shard. It makes the shards much more valuable because they, they, you can sell them for a lot of money if they're glowing. And you got an idea just recently what Jop Jop did. Jop Jop is, uh, is a, a boss of this area that stole a chaos shard from one of you, stuck it into that silver visor that she had on, and put it on her face, and it seemed to blast this emotion into her brain. So she kind of got really high, she got really surged with power, and she got really filled with that emotion that the shard was ripened with. And she poured that emotion into a little mining bot she was working on. That seems to be one of the reasons that she likes ripened shards. She's trying to give these bots different emotions to make them good at mining shards themselves. So that just recently happened. The problem when she did that, uh, and maybe when anybody does this sort of thing, is it opens this chaotic realm. These holes appeared over her head that gave her access to this power that she was doing. And BB had the same problem. The other boss in the, in the machine room had the same problem. It lets demons into the world. From this chaotic realm that gets opened up when the shard is, is, is imbibed, there's demons waiting on the other side that come through these holes and start running around and causing havoc. You, you were attacked by these demons, and it was quite a hard fight. So uh, that's a problem. Uh, demons and dangerous elements come pouring out of these portals. So. You have now settled the problem right now. You uh, killed and you knocked out and then saved Jop Jop. We recently just saved Jop Jop. Something happened just before the, we started this video is uh, these two work together to do a healing spell on Jop Jop is using a valuable resource uh, or two to, to bring her back from the edge of death. She is now uh, manacled uh, and calmed. You, know, you persuaded her, like, don't try to attack us, stay calm. Um, so um, she's, she's not, no longer combatant. Uh, so things are calm now. Uh, you found some little 
bots that you could use to defend the kobolds. You know, know these, these things called the gnolls are coming to uh, attack the kobolds if they haven't done their work for the day. Uh, those little bots are helping protect the kobolds. You're seeing some evidence of that. So you have a little bit of time. Uh, in this time is probably a good time to think of maybe getting a long rest is an option. You know, you're, you're depleted at the end of a lot of fights. You seem to be safe enough to do that. And then maybe when you're feeling good, you want to dig a little deeper. Like there's mysteries that you might want to answer the questions for. There might be things you want to change about the world, like we've already done beforehand, or investigate about the world, like that mushroom cave we did before the, the camera started. Um, so you could just answer questions. Uh, there's four of us here, so I think there should be time for each of you to sort of pick one thing that you want to do to the world, or you want to know more about the world. So think of your top priority. You always have access to do this, by the way, before. If you come early and spending those stamps that I talked about, you can do more investigation. But here, we actually dedicate table, uh, table time for it. So you have a chance to do that. If there's time, I don't think we'll get to backstory stuff. You just learned a lot about each other's backstory. But I'm going to wait for the other two players to show up because I want to entangle everybody as much as possible. We have two players that would be here. They said one time, three. Yeah, they, one Let's time. Two two yeah, so we had a couple of circumstances that took them away. So I'll move that out. But do keep thinking about your backstory if you ever have a chance to coordinate. Remember your goal is to entangle with each other. Mm -hmm. Like make your backstory sort of interleave. And, and, and you've, you've encountered each other before. Like fate has maybe brought you together a few times. So, uh, we are going to be doing that this session. What else are we doing? Ah, as you do all this, you realize, you're already realizing you know, you're special. Like, you've already leveled up, you've just become level two. And this is something where it's like, you don't know anybody who has the equivalent of level two power. Like, this is something where you're starting to feel seriously heroic, even just at level two. You're very unusual uh, and getting more so. So you think, well, okay, stopping the goblin raids is good, but there might be, you might discover there's even more happening here in the case of chaos than just the goblin raids, and you want to start digging deeper. So there might be some really important things in the world, even more important than the goblin raids. So keep an eye out for that. I have a couple announcements. Uh, one is that I want you to talk about plot points. I usually do this, I, I'd like to give them out during play, but I never think of it, and maybe it's better to do it in retrospect. I did it by looking at the video and looking at my notes. I give out plot points to people, uh, to, to players. This is a player thing, not a, it's not a crew in your character. It goes on your, your card. And it's when you have your character do something that your character would do, even though you as a player know this is not a wise thing to do, or like I'm giving something up. You know, if you want to be like a video game player, look, get all the stuff, don't give up any treasure, don't care about anybody else, you know, gain, gain, gain. But if you go off that path, say, no, my character wouldn't take the jewelry from the mushroom cave, for example. Or my character would spend a precious healing slot to heal an NPC that might not be valuable. That's when like, oh, that's them acting in character in a particular way, and I want to give that award. You've actually done something similar with, uh, with, with Jop Jop. So I want to give away a few plot points. What a plot point is is recognition of that. It helps make up for the fact that you're leaning into the story you know, by acting in character. And you get to lean back on the story by spending these plot points. Um, a plot point can be used in a couple ways. One is you can, uh, anything that you roll outside of combat, it's not a combat roll, anything you d20, if you don't like it, you say, I'm going to spend a plot point and pretend that I rolled a 12. Or rolled an 8, because sometimes you want to roll low, sometimes you want to roll high. You can do it to my die rolls or your own die rolls. So any die roll around the table, if you want to like force it to be a 12 or an 8, you can do that. So you can force a monster to lose a saving throw usually that way, unless they're super well prepared. You might, uh, uh, well, saving throw is a combat thing, so that doesn't count. You can also use a plot point to just force a re-roll of any die, even during combat. I'm going to roll that again, or I'm gonna, you're going to make me roll that again. It could be a damage die, it could be a d20. So what you're doing is saying, oh, I don't think the story turned out that way. You know, I'm going to push back on the story a bit. You can also use a plot point just to basically establish something about the world that is plausible, but just a little bit improbable. You know, it's like, well, you know, we are in a, uh, we're in a castle, and I believe that I found a, there should be a broom closet around here that must have like a bucket and a mop because that's what I want to use. So yeah, okay, fine. Spend a plot point, and you'll get a, you'll get a bunch of cleaning supplies. It's plausible that you found some cleaning supplies here in the castle, right? So you can sort of bend the story a little bit that way. So this is like an inspiration. But yeah, it's like inspiration. Yeah. So it's another way. I, I actually used this before Five E came out. So it's very close to inspiration. You can accum accumulate multiple ones, and they also carry across all of your characters. So it's on your cards. You can use them in the future. Um, yeah, and you use them in slightly different ways. But it's kind of like inspiration. So to Hilda for leaving that silver jewelry behind. As long as you promise to never take that silver jewelry, <laughs> as long as because I can't take the plot point back very easily. I'll take your card, your actual because there's a section on your actual index card that has plot points. All right, so I put a little stamp here on the plot point section. 
That is for you to spend at any time you like. Uh, to Sid for healing Havilar and also telling Thogram to thank your patrons. So it's kind of a, each one was worth about half a plot point. So yeah, you, you did you did things that were very much based on your divine devotion that weren't necessarily great for you. As a, uh, it wasn't um, selfish of you as a character that you did that as well. That's great there. What was your reason for bringing Jop Jap back? And you'll be honest, it's like you think it's just oh my character. I think you said your character just oh, really felt like bad. My whole change was because we killed an NPC and then yeah. maybe we did it again. Yeah. So like, yeah, like right. with my memories being the guilt thing, I'm like, this yeah. is gonna break me. Okay, so let me give you a plot thing. point. I mean, if you brought her back, because like oh because I want to you know exploit her somehow. Okay, well that that that's that's for a selfish reason. But yeah, you did it as a sort of selfless reason. You spent a precious resource. There you go. And that's the kind of thing. If anybody feels like, if, if you feel you did anything last session, because I hate leaving you out. Oh. If you feel you did anything last session, it's like, oh, I did this because I was in character, but it was not good for me or the group. I think I refused to take a piece of jewelry. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot that. I swiped that. <coughs> to you, not yes. That, yeah, but he, well, um, uh, so but I established. Oh, she oh she see, I missed that. I know this. She wasn't, you. like, she didn't, she didn't want anyone to steal. She refused to let anyone steal it, but I was like, oh, I just don't want to take it, but, like, I don't mind. Yeah. So, so we can do two ways. I will give you a plot point, the same reason I gave Hilda a plot point. If you retcon, no, you insisted on keeping it there. You didn't let Sid take it. But you get a plot She's point. She's talking about the Chaos Shard The Chaos Shard. No, oh, I think no, the Silver Jordan. Yeah. You didn't take the Chaos Shard necklaces. Because I know two people are um, like, mm. I think yeah, everyone took But that, that might be self interested. It might be like a. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, so if you want to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Let's say you you did not get that silver jewelry, Sweet. so I have to cross oh, that off. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, so no, no, but a plot point is very valuable. I also had like when we first had the purple thing. <laughs> 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 so give, give me your card. You were like in character. I'm going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna charge in, but the group decided that we were gonna negotiate. And you, you kind of calm. Mm. Mm. You have the necklace, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's always a judgment call. Like, and I also need to check because like. The silver one. There you go. Uh, it's a really expensive one. Silver jewelry. Silver jewelry. Two silver pieces yeah. each. Uh, I'll have to look. Do you remember how much the silver jewelry was worth? Uh, it's tagged as two SP. Yeah. yeah. So now you have only your, your yeah. share of the two. Just to check, now, too. Um, you yeah. said last time with the chaos shards that when we experienced the emotion that triggered us, yeah. that it would further ripen them. Yes. Would the, like, the guilt of having killed another NPC... Yeah. Push mine. Yeah, I do ask that uh, when you wake up from a long rest, that's when in the night your shard will glow brighter as you reflect back on the previous day. But your previous day included all the mushroom memory stuff. So it won't happen this long rest, but in the future, every time you do a long rest, I'll ask you, oh, what happened in the last day? What did you dream about of what happened the previous day that might make it glow brighter? Like, are you talking about the Havala one, or are you talking about the Jumped Up one? Uh, well, the one that you were wearing in the mushroom cave is the one that you've, that you've got glowing. Oh, I mean, as in the, the guilt experience. Oh, the guilty experience, yeah. 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 Just so, the job job guilty experience add to... It would, yeah, as long as you've done at least one thing that, that provoked that emotion. So normally it would make it glow even brighter, but because you did all the glowing uh, work of the mushroom cave... Cat for the day. Yeah, it's, it's a sort of cat for the day. No problem. Okay, great. Are we going to investigate? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Oh, yeah. So, just to recap the scene where we're at. Next room. So it's just a few seconds after Jop Jop went down and was brought back. So you are in that machine shop, uh, or no, in Jop Jop's lair near the machine shop. And just think of what your character looks like, feels like, what is different about each of your characters at this moment. When we sort of zoom in the camera on each of you, we have Carrick. He is a half elf, a moon cleric, recently converted to become a cleric because of certain things. A cleric of peace, level two now. Uh, so yeah, what uh, what. What's different about Carrick than usual? What's, uh, what does he look like, feel like, that's unusual? Um, probably just really relieved after being frantic, like kind of rushing in trying to save Job Job, yeah. fearing having done this again, um, that now relieved that it was successful yeah. and that, that we have not killed another one and committed another <laughs> crime against peace. <laughs> okay, great. So we can see that on your face. We have a Slippery Sid. He is a half-elf, high warlock, level two. Uh, so, uh, what do we notice about Sid right now? He seems very happy. He, like, while at the end of the last fight, he was kind of seemed to be arguing with that voice in his head. This time, <laughs> they seem to be on the same page. Like, yeah, uh, you've done good. You killed the darkness. Ah, uh, good. Yes, yes. That's uh, a couple of things you've done to uh, to to glorify mm -hmm. Neve. Uh, we, whoops, we have Hilda. Uh, she is a hill dwarf cleric of the nature realm level two. So what do we notice about Hilda at this exact moment? Um, well, she starts, she kind of like herself feels like she's much, much tougher than before, 
as my hit point max has gone up by one. Yeah. Even then, I'm a dwarf. Yeah. Um, other than that, she's worried because she's in the back of her mind is of the Feywild and uh, what that monster was. All right. So they're dealing with this, but like it's still in the back of her head. Like what happened there? Cool. Okay. Great. A bit of worry is nice for drama. Mm. Uh, we have Buffy. They are a human fighter level two. So, I, so Jop Jop was that like crazy lady mm -hmm. yeah. that was like really aggressive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. she opened up the portal over her yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, she had yeah, the yeah. bot and she was like cooing to the bot. And, you know, yeah, anger, oh, yeah, anger, baby. Yeah. You want to feel angry? Yeah, so yeah, I want yeah. to get the shards. She, she made me feel really uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then once you all started attacking her, she started attacking back, and then, then you yeah. had to take her out. And I, also, you figured you had to take her out because you kept making demons. I did like the saving, like the end. Yeah, you do the coup de grace, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. That, well, you definitely yeah. you stop well, the threat. I guess I'm feeling, yeah, yeah. pretty good about <laughs> good. saving everyone. Like, good job. Like, yeah, this is my destiny. And then, awesome. yeah, I'm kind of in, in two ways. I don't believe in killing unnecessarily, hmm. but we, I was defending my, my hmm. mates. Yeah. But I was still, like, I'm like, oh, this... She makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, so I'm not really sure about her. Interesting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She went down, then she got brought back, and she's now shackled, like, and she's just looked Maybe I passive. think she's still a bit of a, a danger. I yeah. might have to do it again. Okay, that's right, yeah. Also, <laughs> sort of point out, of patting your bow, <laughs> looking at her like, don't cause trouble, I can do that again. Guilty that we let those demons go, too. Yeah, yes, that's like one of the questions so we'll get into right away. Very yeah. good. I think there was like six of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That is a subject I did want to get to. Did they climbed up the walls yeah. towards the holes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Celestia was all about anti-demon. Yeah. So it's getting its powers from Celestia. Yeah. Like now, as I said, um, you, you don't, I, I took away the house rule, you no longer get the effect of a long rest as soon as you level up. So you have to long rest to get the full benefit of leveling up. However, just leveling up, you've got some more hit points than before, you've got another spell slot that's full, so all of you are a little bit better off than you were at the end of the fight, as you realize you're now level two. You can use the strength to chase down those demons. They have just a few seconds ago skittered up the walls and gone into those slimy tunnels up above you, and you know those tunnels probably lead to the surface. Uh, those of you who are you know, dungeoneer types, dwarves especially, figure like you can, if you get out to the surface right away, you can probably pick up their trail before they find new victims. You might be able to chase them down. However, you'd be putting yourself at some risk. You're not sure it'd be a huge risk because they were trying to run away from you. They definitely realized that you were killing them, so they wanted to get away from you and find easier prey. So it's possible that if it just gets too hairy, you could just back off and let them escape. You know, so so you're not sure how dangerous it will be, but still, you're getting out of the cave, you're running around the surface, and who knows what happens. So, what do you do? Well, I've still got Hex on one of them. I'm still concentrating on it. Sure. And uh, I think at least I'd just like to kill that one. <laughs> 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 so you're a completionist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finish it off. <laughs> so you're leaning towards voting for it. has to be a group vote. So we'll go for, uh, what, what do you think, Buffy? Um, sorry, what did you say? Sorry. Uh, so, uh, well, this is, he, he has reasons to chase down the demons. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. do you That's, want to chase yes, down the demons? Yes. <laughs> you're voting yeah. yes. How about you? I feel guilty about letting them out. I need to stop them. Okay. All right. Hilda, how do you feel about chasing down the demons versus not? We're going to rest and let them go. Hilda? So sorry. Uh, I'm preparing <laughs> my spell slots because sure. I realized that's something I have. That's now. fun. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, do you want to chase down the demons yeah, before yeah. you take a long rest the extra and ask for some, some danger? Two, so it probably wouldn't be a good uh, idea. Yeah, I'm at three as well, so maybe we should so, long rest. Before so, so yeah, as part of your leveling up, you actually get more hit points. Yeah. So in the yeah. back, it says your oh, uh, says your maximum hit points goes up by X by something. You've got that many more hit points now. So I have three. Constitution, 10, five yeah. plus constitution is two. Get seven so you should get seven additional. So ten. Yes, go and check so, okay. it. Okay, okay. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> 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 and so if we so really need to, I've got like a nineteen total, but I've got ten. Well, you've lost. No worries. Yeah. So I've got ten, and then okay, and then I have what? Nineteen. Nineteen total. So it's half of ten because you roll a d10, but you can take the average. So five plus a two from your constitution. Okay. Is it actually five for a d10? Because it's five for a d8. Yeah. I feel like you get more than a I five. I thought it was average. For, you take the average. Because I've got a D8 and it's four plus level. I'm pretty sure. Oh, so see, our D8 says take no, five. No, we can fix those breakers. It's enough It's enough to get through this next part, I think. Because you can always and back off. And we can still do it to like so heal if we need it. No, I want to know if I get an extra hit point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have 10 hit points up to like 24 at the moment? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it could be 25. <laughs> 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 well, it's fine. Everybody's interested. So when you when you gain, you, so you uh, the number of hit points maximum that you gain, and also you'll get this, this many hit points back right now, is you take a look at your hit die, your hit die size, mm -hmm. which is what for you? D8. D8. You cut it in half. Yeah. 
and you add one. Okay. Right? Add one. Yeah. So this is a one so this would be a six then. Uh, because be five, add one. Th this is kind of old school. So it used to be that you had to roll a die. So you had to roll a uh, D8 to right see. Right. Oh, I'm going to see how many hit points I got. Uh, yeah, they yeah. made a rule that said, ah, oh, that's too dicey for you, literally. You can pretend that you rolled a five. Uh, Oof, you can so pretend really that you bad. rolled a six. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you can okay. pretend that you rolled a six and then add your constitution bonus. Yeah. So it would be for you, uh, for Buffy, it would be eight plus your constitution bonus. That's how many more hit points you, I mean, your maximum goes up by uh, that yeah. much. For you, say yeah, it would be yeah, five yeah. plus your constitution bonus. Oh, yeah. That makes I, sense to everybody. Yeah. So I had a total of twenty hit points. So your so yeah so your maximum yeah. goes up. Yeah. And of course your your actual hit points that you currently have for this fight how also goes up. How possibly. many how many hit points do, does it go up? Like not the total but the your like. Did you say your, your maximum went up to twenty? Yeah, my maximum how much went up to damage twenty. Points I had have? three. I had three hit points. Out of your twelve. Yes. So you currently go like eleven. Okay. Is that 11 down? Yeah. So I'm 11. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. 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 You scramble out of the cobalt cave because you're eager to catch up to the where the demons are. Hustle. You run past those cobalts. You use your things to go through the silver keyhole. You're in the machine shop. You know the cobalt's like, "What's going on?" And you talk to the job job. It's like, yeah, "Here, use these bots. Defend yourself against the gnolls. We'll be right back." You're <laughs> no, running out of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> you're running out of the cave. You're in the caves of chaos, which you've se seen before. You scramble up the north side because you know you've, you're guessing where the tunnels from job job's lair come out. You scramble up a hill. Now you're on the north side of that big canyon. You've seen this place before. When you're captives, you were led through a charred forest. Nothing but ash on the ground, sort of crispy ash, and uh, trees that are like skeletons of burned trees everywhere. Fairly thick, but a lot of charred trees in every direction. This is where the acid rain was? Yes, you, you saw, saw the acid rain just before you got in the canyon. Again, using your dungeoneering skills, you sort of triangulate, oh, okay, if these tunnels are coming up to the surface, it must be over here somewhere, so you run over there. Uh, who of you is trained in survival? Yes. I guess I am. Great, yeah. So you're proficient in survival. Yeah. You two immediately start looking for tracks and you recognize like, ah, here are the tracks of the demons. So good job. You can see their tracks of the ash. It's a relatively easy trail to follow, so you don't have to roll for it. You just succeed. They are heading kind of north-ish. So you start following as a group as fast as you can. It's weird. You see that the tracks, it looks like there's a bunch of big sort of tracks, so you're the same size as the six demons you had. But then you see like there's a bunch of like uh, roots and plants and, and bits of charred wood that have been sort of chewed up and eaten, and then there's like ten smaller sets of finger uh, footprints. It seems like it seems like the number of demons is sort of like increasing, but they're getting smaller as they go. What's up with that? You don't know. So the trail's kind of getting strange. As you follow, you see something in the far distance that makes you stop. In the distance, you see the ground slopes down a bit, and there's a, obviously a big pit because just like you see, edges drop off. So there's a big pit in the forest up ahead with no trees. Maybe a, a couple, a few, a hundred meters across. You hear a bunch of voices coming from that pit at a great distance. Just the yammering of like dozens of voices, and it seems like anguished, like cries, screaming, uh, yells of anger coming from that pit. You can't see anybody in there; it must be too deep. And then you see in a ring around that pit are a bunch of figures, and they stand like warriors. They're humanoid looking, but their heads are sort of weird shapes. You can't see this distance, what's wrong with their heads. But you do see that a number of them on the closest edge of the pit are facing towards you, and they're like, rrr, 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 rrr. they're making this noise, and they're raising bows up above their heads, like sort of like victory gestures. But they don't seem to see you. They're, they're kind of facing your general direction, but they don't seem to have seen you, because of course, as soon as you spot them, you sort of hunker down a bit. So they're kind of making noise in your direction. You're not sure why, pumping their arms. You're, no, you're in no shape to get closer. Like There's enough of them, and they have bows. Like You know you don't want to just run in and start attacking them, so you slow down a bit. In these burned branches on the ground around you, they're all sort of scuttling and moving. And just as you get on alert, something bursts out of the branches towards you. And you see the demons, the dretches. They're running towards you now. And a number of them have arrows stuck in them. You see that now there's a bunch of small ones. Instead of like six big ones, there's like you know 12 or more little ones. They're all like sort of a quarter of the size they were before, and they're more misshapen. And also they're like bristling with kind of bits of wood and plants and sort of bits of fungus. It's almost like they've been consuming you know like whatever kind of plant material they can. And their smell is still really bad, but they're spitting poison now. 
like 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 the kind of poison they've maybe inherited from these plants. So their poison now is, is much more acrid and, and dangerous. The, the cloud is not so bad anymore, but now they just seem like poisonous sort of half plant creatures that are coming at you. They look really weird. They have, uh, they, they are running towards you and the arrows sticking out of them are strange. The ends of the arrows have got tufts of fur at the ends of the arrows. Instead of where feathers would normally be at the end of an uh, arrow, there's just tufts of fur. Strange design. So they're running away from that pit and running away from those figures that are raising their bows and they're running towards you. It seems like they just happened to come across you as you're heading towards them. But uh, in their surprise, uh, maybe in their, their chaotic, uh, evil nature, uh, they start to attack you. So this is your chance to take out these dretches in a somewhat different form. Now, what I'm going to introduce is something new to try. This is what I call quick combat. D&D, &D, the kind of combat you've been doing is you know, what I call crunchy, by-the-book, set-piece combat, square by square, and you go exactly what's on your character sheet. This is a simpler form of combat. It goes quicker. And it's more cinematic. This is maybe a bit more like streamed to D&D, feels a bit more like this. This is, this is a, definitely on that end of the scale. I wanted to have to get an experience with that. So I've adapted D&D combat to really simplify it. So I'll describe how that goes. But it's really about you just telling a great story. And it still involves dice, and still involves damage, but it's much more about you just kind of talking about how badass you are. So you're going to go in sort of a cinematic mode here. Mm -hmm. You're going to make some decisions about how much danger you want to put yourself in, and maybe if you want to use any of your special powers. So I'll introduce that as we go. All right. So I'm going to put some chips in the middle of the, the, the table here. I'm going to put seven of them. This represents just how many, don't think of this as literally how many demons there are. This is just how many of these little demons are currently a threat to you in the first few seconds. So there's seven little bundles of damage that are waiting to be done to you. It's up to you to split them up. You can split them up, you can't split them up evenly. If you're more of a tank, you probably take some more. If you're down, you're on the edge of death already, or if you're just very squishy, you might take only one or even none. So decide for yourselves, pull it towards your edge of the battle mat and say, yep, I'm willing to take on that risk of the demon. As you decide, remember they're spitting poison, so you think you'll be doing a constitution saving throw to spare yourself from damage. That might affect your decision as well. Seems to be poison damage. Oh, I've got like plus four saving throw. Great, yeah, you're a tank, you've got a good constitution, so you might take oh. you might yeah, might take a, a larger well, share two. of chips as a result. Take three. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> negotiation. Quick quick Can and split them up. up? Like no, so it's all individually. Yeah, so you, you, can, you can help each other out. So you can kill each other's monsters. You'll get to a point of that, but mo this is how much risk you're willing to take. How much? How much you're going to defray the damage to yourself? Just decide on a, on a win. Yeah, I'm happy to take two. Yeah. 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 yeah, somebody take one. Yeah, so if you split them evenly, the three of you have two, okay, and one of you have one. Yeah, you can move them around more if you like. So that this is that is that locked in? Yeah. I've got 22 hit points if I can take another one. You're good, you're good, you're good. There's only seven. And yeah, there's only seven to take. And what's your constitution? So, I yeah, think it's plus two. I'm not bad. Okay. Okay. I'm writing down oh, a secret whammy here. This is something that I'm going to keep in mind. I'm going to reveal. Yeah, you can take you that can one, take one then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm you're going to take one. <laughs> No I forgot you got poison. That's something that I might, something that, that I might reveal later on. <laughs> it might be something that makes the battle a little bit more complicated. You might guess what it is. Okay. I'm going to randomly decide whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise. If we don't do initiative. We just do around the table initiative. Uh, it's even, which means I start with you, Kate. I'm going to cast Sacred Flames. Yeah, exactly. So what you do is pick something on your character sheet. You pick something that just has a good plus. It might be your attack bonus. Uh -huh. It might be a skill like acrobatics. It might be you just want to tell a story about why does this, you know, maybe kill a demon or at least or at least neutralize a demon. Mm -hmm. And you can have fun with this, right? Mm -hmm. So just pick something. You know, if you're great at history, you might decide like I'm going to you know remember a battle you know where demons were fought and I'm going to uh, construct a special rampart. You just do fun things right now with any of your skills or any of your pluses. Every, try to always come up with something different. So every time we do this, try to showcase different aspects for characters. So you yeah. know, try to show a lot of variety here. And if you describe it in an exciting way, you might get an extra plus one from, from me. So yeah, pick out anything that you like, and you're trying to neutralize one of the demons. And you can say, you're going to neutralize your own demon. Or you can say, I'm going to try to take out somebody else's. That'll be a decision you can make, too. I'll aim at one of the demons. Yeah. And I'll be casting Sacred Flame. Great, OK. It's sacred. <laughs> dealing with demons. Right, yes, yeah. So like, yeah, what are you like when you're in God mode? Like, do you yeah. give a religious speech? Do you just concentrate silently in your God? Or are you very showy when you pray? I guess I'll concentrate. I'll do like a little prayer. Yeah. I have a flame god yeah. as my um, ah, right. follower yeah. of a flame god. Yeah. 
Yeah, it costs me good flame. That's awesome. Right out, yeah, so, in the, so I'll give I'm you a plus. I'm assuming it's like a five <laughs> Is that what it is? Pretty so much, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So, so Sacred Flame is radiant five. energy oh. erupts. Yeah. Now, what I do is I turn this into a d20. Very so great. Sacred Flame, usually I would do a saving throw, but you're just going to use your spell attack bonus on okay. this. So whatever your normal spell attack bonus uh, is written on the, the back of your sheet is when you cast um, cast Guiding Bolt or whatever else. Down down at the very end there, you see what your spell attack bonus. All of your spells that where you roll the die is maybe near the top of that list there. Um, it's five. Yeah, and you're going to keep using that over and over again. So that's, that's for your reference. Okay. That's for any spell where you roll a d20. So I'm turning Sacred Flame into something where you roll a d20. Roll that, add your five, and add this on top of it because you know, you're, uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're tapping it. I like the cinematic that you painted yeah. there. A 14, so 20. Okay, yes, dirty your total 20. is 20, a dirty 20. What I do now is I take a look at, if you beat the DC, you might take out more than one demon. Okay, you definitely take one out. You don't take out two, a little bit higher, you might take out two. Do you take out one that's a danger to you, or do you take one out that's a danger to someone else? I'll take one out that's a danger to me. Sure, that's very natural. So move, is there, move it towards the middle of the, of the, of the thing. And now it's your turn. Um, they've already taken some arrows, though. I'm guessing they're probably not full health, so I'm going to use Toll of the Dead, which does additional damage if they know at maximum health. Oh, clever, um, okay, yeah. So, the sound of, like, a funeral bell yeah. goes off right. next to them, um, dealing, uh, I think it's 1d12. Okay, if, if okay. If they've lost health, otherwise Great. it's a DM. Okay, well, I should have taken this away. Yes, I like that description. You've given us a little bit of color there. I like that. So there's bongs or rings out, and you try to knock them out. What Tolling kind of end. what kind of damage does it do? It's necrotic. Necrotic damage. Okay, fortunately, they seem to be they they they're, they can be hurt by necrotic damage. Not a problem. This is a new damage type, and you're learning something about demons. Remember last time you learned they're resistant to certain things. Now you know that necrotic works just fine against them. Roll a d20. Add one to your usual spell attack bonus. Um, it'll be 17. 17, that is enough to take one out. So you can take one of yours out or take out somebody else's. Take out your own. Yeah, yeah, that's typical. All right, so you, Buffy, okay. describe what you do. So I have like a um, animal handling skill. So I like cool. go to one of the demons. I'm like, oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good <laughs> demon. <laughs> you like you crit it. And I'm like, yeah, get like an arrow. And I'm like, oh, does, it, does a good demon want a stick? Do you want to fetch a stick? Like throw an that is yeah. awesome. We we'll give you two for that. That is fantastic. <laughs> that is That's a great example. <laughs> yeah, it starts acting like maybe it's eaten a few dogs or something because like yeah. <laughs> has like has like has like, got a couple patches of fur that has probably been eating a few dogs. It seems to have acquired some sort of like yeah, it seems to acquire like the properties of the things it's been eating. So it's like <laughs> I can see it's got like a dog's tongue <laughs> as he throws the stick, and so you're gonna distract it. Go and roll animal handling. You get two uh, two on top of whatever you're. So do I is. roll a d twenty? Yeah, roll a d twenty. Take your animal handling bonus. Six. Okay, but with three. these pluses, good. So nine. Plus nine. Oh, oh no, 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 at nine total. No, no. At, at a nine total? Yeah, nine total. Nine total's not quite enough. It's a very good idea. Dis we're going to get a pet. <laughs> Describe how this goes wrong. So, no, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? What, what goes wrong in this scene? Um, okay, I like... I throw it and then it like I th accidentally throw it onto a tree and it's uh, too high for the. Oh, uh, I guess frustrated. Yeah, I get stuck up in the like burned tree. Like <laughs> I guess like mad. That, <laughs> okay, and, yeah. good. All right, didn't go so well, but it was a great idea. What do you do? Okay. So <laughs> Sid. Sid's. He, well, first of all, you know Sid isn't there anymore. John mm -hmm. Jock's there. Because Ooh. Sid has used his uh, mask of familiar faces to disguise himself oh, <laughs> as Chop Chop. Oh, great. And basically he's going kind of like, with that kind of, trying to mimic that kind of drawling southern yeah. s seductive voice of hers. Do it, Chop. I leave, 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 I that, that's great. Yes. What skill do you think you're using? Maybe is deception uh, well, or deception or persuasion? I've persuaded plus five and both. Okay, so sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, deception. You're trying to pretend to be job. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So now you get to roll deception as your as your attack and add one more. That's a great idea. Nineteen. Well. Woo! Plus All right. Five plus, five plus one. Yeah. God damn. It. So yeah, twenty-five. Twenty-five. That is enough to take out two demons. You, they can both be yours or yours and somebody else's. Do whatever you like. So yeah, the two of them destroy each other as you encourage them to, <laughs> to fight to the death. It's gladiator, I send, gladiator style. Uh, I think I send my two to attack your two if that's alright. Okay. Yeah. So only two total will be pushed. So you okay. say, say one of each of yours. So, yeah. yeah. 
lose one of each. Yeah, one of yeah, each. Yeah, one of each, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So each of you push a chip in. All right, you've helped out Buffy. All right, great. So that is, now it's the demon's turn, and this is just the, uh, the same kind of round. Each of you has a chip in front of you. If you have at least one chip in front of you, roll one saving throw. It's a constitution saving throw against poison. So if you've got a chip still in front of you, so you do it all. D20. D20. Mm -hmm. It's a saving throw. Remember your. Do you have a strap on? Yes. I throw it twice. Yeah, right. I just got that one there. Ah, oh, yeah, because it's poison. Very good. You've got advantage. So, dwarf that you are, you have better Three. chances. <laughs> Three to four. Three to four. Is it plus anything? Just curious. Uh, it'd be plus whatever's in that little box. So, you've got a little box there of saving throws. Go ahead and point that out, Simon. There oh, you the go. Constitution. Yeah, do you want to point out the Constitution? Yeah. So, that's that's six. 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 Okay, six. 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 Like yeah, so resistant to uh, poison. Damage. All right, all right. Yeah, um, I got 20, 21. Okay, so if you got a thirteen no, or higher, you take no damage. Okay, yeah, what I, did you get? Me too. Yeah, I got a twenty-one as well. Very good. Okay, so you two. Yeah, so you'll take uh, half that. Damage yeah, you two absorb okay. the poison, but right. you're able like uh, it gets spat on you, hits you, but you're able to. Like, oh, you're yeah. 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 You dwarf that you are, maybe confident, like it hits you, and it's just a tight, like it's a weird kind of otherworldly poison that your dwarven constitution just does not agree with. So you take damage. Uh, that you take five points of poison damage. I have to half it, so is that three? Very good. So you got poison resistance, so you get to cut uh -huh. that and you drop all fractions. You take only two instead of five, instead of five. Very two? Good. And so, so it's so not three? You, down you, round you round it down. You drop fractions. Yay, yeah, five. by default, you drop <laughs> fractions in D&D. &D. Okay, not, very good. So cold. you get an idea of that. I just wanted to sort of give you a little taste of that. This is an example like of quick combat. You like yeah, that? I yeah, think yeah. I get a bit, uh, not bored, but I get a bit, um, my... Like, I, I find it hard to focus, focus sometimes. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some platforms or some things that are not even called D&D &D that have this kind of combat. You only little, like, maybe D6s instead of all the other dice. And just do, like, combats take about five minutes or ten minutes like that one did. And they're quite colorful. So you can, D&D &D can be adapted that way, but some there's some whole platforms that are that way. Yeah, it's not about position. It's more about just telling a good but, like, story. Because often you'll story. have a plan and then someone moves things and you're like, yeah. crap, now I've got to rethink that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's just a very basic thing. There's there are little more things you can complicate that with. Uh, I'll, do, I'll, I'll erase this. Um, None of those got triggered. Uh, what was that? There, there, you have chances <laughs> to do sacrifices. Like uh, one extra rule is you can roll with advantage if you give something up, like give up a daily spell slot or some other daily ability. You get to roll with advantage. If you give up uh, something valuable, like something that's worth, you know, some, like you take an item and you say, I'm going to sacrifice this item, you can roll with advantage. So again, you look at your sheet and say, oh, I'm going to just basically use something that's of a limited, limited use. So well, I'm glad you enjoyed that. All right. Jump back up. Oh, yeah. All right, now those so they all get destroyed. So even though don't you know the, the demons themselves, they attack you, but the battle continues in that vein until they're all gone. This is just again a very high level thing. You have taken out the demons, so you've been that little extra bit heroic. You face some extra damage, and it wasn't all that bad after all. Uh, so you go on back. Uh, yeah, something about the way ooh, the way they subdivide and all that stuff, and they they've gotten pretty badly hurt by whatever those creatures are off there. So fortunately, some of the work had been done for you. You now go back to where you started, which is the machine shop or Jop Jop's room. You're a bit worn down. Uh, you could take a long rest. It's, again, a group vote. Do you want to take a long rest? Or you could just take a short rest and say, no, we're going to go on. Uh, you're not under a whole lot of time pressure, apart from knowing that, well, the farm communities are being raided every day, so you don't want to just take a long holiday. But um, you know, taking a long rest would be perfectly respectable at this point. If you had a lot of time pressure, you might consider not resting at all. But I'm I'm okay with the long rest, but I'm, I could also do. I'm all right with the short rest as well because I get my spell slots back on there anyway. So it's up to you guys. I think you take a long rest and jump I think I'm only one of our only chances, yeah. so I might as well take it. Yeah, yeah. might as well. Cool. Okay, so you take a long rest. Uh, don't you get don't get the benefits yet, but the long rest starts. Uh, and there's there's a little bit of a process here. Okay, oh, where do you do it? Do you do it in Job Jobs Lair? I do the machine room. I, I want to sleep on the yeah. nice There's all these cushions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We right. can like talk a bit. So plus two to, to attack us. They've got to come through the the like silver thing. Yeah. So not any not oh, everything. Oh, true. Will be not even gonna attack you. Mm -hmm. to, like maybe yeah. a defensible position. Yeah. yeah. Should we maybe check for traps on where we're sleeping as well? No, I don't <laughs> think. No, I wouldn't say traps. But should we take in turns? Look out. Yeah, so yeah. by default, I, I don't like to draw out rest of us. So yeah, you're all taking turns and all that stuff. I have systems for like, oh, if something does attack you, I randomly decide who's on watch and then I compare it to mm. your perception all that Let's stuff. Let's go into that second room with the roller door and we'll just close it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you do actually figure out a way. There's a mechanism in Jop Jop's lair that uh, that opens and closes that door. So not only are so, so you could actually be in the, the the back room where you killed her and then brought her back, or the front room with all of the the hookah pipes and stuff. I'll stay in the hookah pipe. Room. Yeah, so front you should room, stay but she can stay it's in the fun. back and we'll close the door. <laughs> sure. Okay. Anytime you do a rest, I do a random roll for uh, what might be an encounter. Even if you're not attacked, things might be sneaking up on you. So mm -hmm. I have a secret roll on that. So that may result in you not getting your long rest and getting attacked in the middle of the night. But fortunately, that doesn't happen. You wake up very refreshed. Heroes that you are, all of your damage is gone. So you have full hit points at your maximum. Mm -hmm. You also gain one hit die. Now that probably means all of you have two hit dice because you just gained one by leveling up. So just, just to, you just know for sure you have two hit dice. Just know in the future, every time you long rest, you get half of your hit die back. So you get only one hit die back every time you do a long what, rest. What is that? What is a hit the die? The hit dice are the things you roll when you did a short rest. You rolled that die and mm -hmm. added, you got automatic hit points by doing mm -hmm. a short rest. Mm -hmm. You spend a hit die to do that. So it's a resource that goes down in order to do short rests. And it's now 2d10 oh. for you. Yeah, so now you got so two d10s, you, d10s, you oh, got two okay. d10s to spend uh, during short rests. Okay. So okay. you're, you're okay. totally full strength. Yeah, next time, then, I think. Remember, a long rest gives you also the benefit of a short rest. So if you have anything that recharges on short rest, that comes back. So your second wind comes back uh, for Buffy. Uh, your spells come back so yeah. in a short or long rest. Your channel divinity comes back. All those things that recharge on a long rest are recharged. Good job. Your... Uh, uh, yeah, you want to start thinking about what spells you pick. You're going to do some spell switching. So is those of you like clerics, you have to decide at the beginning of the day what spells yeah. you have prepared. So you've got to okay. commit to those. The, I don't have to stop for it. Just a quick question, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sure. it says that it's like been expanded to five instead of um, four. I yeah, know. yeah. So like from this list, what you do, do that's what these things are. Yeah, exactly. Are they included, though? No, they're not included. Yeah, okay. so you could do five so on top. So these are always that's prepared because of your lot. divinity. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So there's ready to cast, and of course, you burn your slots to do it. Yep, yep, so you decide what you do. And you can decide, you know, while, while I do this next part, you know, you just need to commit some time in the next several minutes. Um, eat and drink. So you all must, uh, so you basically only eat and drink once a day, or you know, for once a day. So you probably have ration, hopefully you have rations somewhere in your inventory. It's got to literally be written on your character sheet. So if you have rations, reduce your number of rations by one because you're eating some food. Right. You ended up getting rations, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I bought some because I didn't okay. have any like, yeah, oh, spare so yeah. We eat. <laughs> it's been yeah, a long we long haven't. Long. Yeah, it's been a good while. But and it's the last thing we ate were those mushrooms that we found in the cell. Kind of meant to be good. Yeah, that's right. Luckily, uh, the cobalt lair in the demon possession, it didn't ruin their drinking water system. So you basically can drink from the equivalent of like sinks and fountains that are in the cobalt uh, room. You can also fill up your water skin. So your water skin holds a day of water, and you get multiple water skins. So just make sure if, if your water skin was empty, you would erase the notation empty. I think I have so we know that the water's clean. Oh, you should yeah. get a water skin. Get a Otherwise, water you have to borrow one from somebody. Yeah. And everybody here has only one. Can I so. bargain with the cobalt yeah, uh, water skin like a pool? Uh, yes, there is. There is an opportunity to buy from the cobalt. So I'll be sharing that with you, and yeah. you do that between yeah. sessions. Sorry. Do the cobalt know that Jobs have died yet? And brought back. Well, that's the question. So as it is, you know, they, uh, they, they, they're they used to Jop Jop sort of disappearing for a while, so it'll take longer for them to realize something's up. It'll be your decision during this investigation, you know, to say, okay, we're going to break it to them gently that Jop Jop died, and that's what you want to do with your move. Remember, each of you has one priority. It's the most important but thing. Jop Jop's fine. Like, we don't have to yeah, say that's anything. That's true. Exactly. I can't remember, like, room. What their angle on Jop Jop was? Were, did they send us what in there to? Like she's the boss. Yeah, so okay. she's she's the one really in charge. Like BB is like a lieutenant. Jop Jop is the boss. It's like Jop Jop will know what to do. Like okay. you know, should and that, that's a decision coming up. Should we work for you to do something else with this black dragon idea that you have, or should we keep working for the Knolls? They're your friends now, and they're looking for your lead. They want to get powerful, and that's one of the first decisions you'll have. At this point, this is where I would do the chaos shard thing. But uh, for the reasons I explained, your chaos shard is the same color as it was before. But keep that in mind. You can decide, remember, if you if it's not around your neck, you've got to write in pocket or in backpack. So you can decide at any point to change whether your, your chaos shard is outside or inside your shirt or in your pocket or something. But in order for it to ripen today, you should be wearing it outside full. So everybody can see that you've got it, but it can see out. So you know if it's, it's observing the world. So. Are we allowed to do actions now? Uh, it'll be part of this this thing here. So okay. uh, so just, just wait and we'll do that where uh -huh. you can do little actions as part of your investigation. But uh, I'll, I'll do that in a sec. Da, da, da. All right. 
Uh, by the way, uh, you got 25 experience points from that little short combat, so give yourself 25 XP. So now we're keeping track of individual little acts. We'll give you individual bits of XP. And loot. As you uh, defeated the oh, demons, the you get a little bit of loot. Uh, they they basically picked up sort of you know accumulated bits of like bodies and stuff they're eating. So you can imagine like just little little coins and bits of, of just ordinary jewelry uh, that you found as you're going. Each of you uh, gets seven uh, seven silver pieces. You can dress that up if you like. Like no, oh, I found copper pieces instead. But you know you get. So each of you should add eight silver, seven silver pieces to your inventory because the demons that you killed it had sort of absorbed some some junk and from dead bodies they found. All right, we get on to section two, which is uh, doing some uh, some some investigation and horde splitting. Ah, first thing is splitting that horde. Jop Jop's room is full of treasure. Uh, yes, Ford. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for this. Uh, yes, this lots the of one treasure. Time I like to steal. Yeah. When they're First off, she has lots of drugs in the lounge. Oh, you each can drugs. take. So, by the time you split it up, so what I do is I pre divide. I say, you get this. If you ever want to trade these things to each other, that's between y'all. So I just say, you each, this is your share. Put it on your sheet, and then you can decide to trade it away. So, you each, and this is where it can be creative. Describe some drug smoking implement. It could be a bong, it could be a pipe, it could be a bucket, it could be a milk bottle. <laughs> you know, go back to your share house days, you know, one of those, uh, whatever you like. So you can write down, if you choose, write down, uh, you know, wa just write down water pipe or metal pipe or like clay bong pipe. or... You want to smoke a So you got a bong or hookah, yeah, full on hookah. So put that down. Also, you each way split up, uh, just say jop jop uh, leaves, you know, this basically herbs. Uh, that will get you stoned, obviously. Times two, so you can basically like two good bowls of, of, of smokable, smokable herbs, smokable drugs. So say you can say it's called Jop Jop drugs times two, or Jop Jop drugs times two. We'll know what they are. So that's your decision on when and whether to use those, or maybe sell them. You don't really know how much they're worth, so I'm not going to put a, a, a gold value on them. It really depends on your buyer. There's machine parts here, as I described. She has been obviously assembling bots and things, and you know a lot of the things. If you're you're kind of too impatient to disassemble the stuff that you've done, but there's a few machine parts just lying around. So each of you can carry, if you want, one machine part of your choice. Just write down something that would come from farm or village machinery. So write down gear, tube, wire, piston, you know, mm -hmm. uh, rod, something made of metal that would be part of a working machine. It, it weighs 10 pounds, by the way, so those of you, it, you could probably carry it, but you know, if, if you're a little worried about getting too heavy, you might want to account for that later on. But all of you can probably handle 10 pounds worth of stuff. It's just in your backpack, so make it up yourself. What kind of machine part is it? And you're kind of committing to that now. Whatever you write down, that's what it becomes. Lastly, uh, or before we do the, the really interesting stuff, um, or treasury stuff, you also find uh, something you've seen before. It is a bronze ledger, it's like a, a, like a bronze clipboard sized plate. It's something that the kobolds had that when the goblins were bringing back all those machines, the goblins were recording something on a bronze ledger. That ledger is here, you're pretty sure it's the same one. And it's basically like a mechanical calculator or like an abacus in that it's got a lot of little dials and buttons and things. It's purely mechanical, but you can see the dials can be set to different values. And so it's got a bunch of like rows and rows of data that the dials have all been set to different things. Um, you can't, you know, you'd have to spend a move to investigate more. But it's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. We'll look at this later. One of you gets that. If you're interested in just having it in your inventory, uh, so you can investigate it later on, uh, roll a d20 right now. If you if you are the highest d20, you're the one that wins it. It doesn't seem to be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Ten. Eleven. Eighteen. Seventeen. Okay, so write down shard mining ledger because that's what it says at the top. Shard mining ledger, L E D J J U R G U R. And you can choose to investigate that later on, um, but you can just knock around your backpack forever until you decide to take a look at it. Okay, now let's get to the shiny stuff. There are coins in all of our various drawers and chests and things. Uh, and I'm going to give you your share. We'll start with the most boring one, which is copper pieces. These are like pennies. A hundred of them make a gold piece, but you know, they're what farmers and, and peasants might use, so it's candy to have some if they can't make change. You each have 130 copper pieces. 
It's the equivalent of a gold piece right there. A dollar penny. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's kind of more impressive I remember that one, way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one gold piece is the equivalent of a fifty dollar note in today's money. So that's not to bad. To people. It's like fifty it's bucks. Right fifty dollars of the pennies is basically so what you've just found. One hundred thirty. One hundred thirty copper pieces. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So that's one gold, three silver. I just write it down as 130 copper. Okay. So, so y you usually have to account for it. You know, like if you want to be super realistic, sometimes you want to make some things like I can't make change for that. I can't take a gold piece for this apple. Have you got any copper pieces? So you want to actually have copper pieces sometimes. Mm -hmm. You also find your share is 65 silver pieces. Okay, now we're talking silver coins. And picture these coins are all different shapes and sizes and what a provenance. Like they all come from different cities and, and lands around the world, but they all have the same amount of silver in them. This is back when you know. It's basically there's lumps of silver that have been weighed to, to be a certain purity and size. And so the stamp on them just says, this kingdom testifies this is silver and it weighs this amount. Yeah. You can always weigh it and test it yourself, but they don't seem fake. So right down 65 silver pieces of various provenance. But there's some gold pieces, holy cow. Oh, the nobles are the ones that use gold pieces. It's very rare to come across gold pieces. It's like flashing a $100 note, you know, in today's society or a $1,000 note. Four gold pieces is your share. You now have four gold pieces. Good money. So, for level one, this is an appreciable amount of money with which you will mm -hmm. have a chance to buy things because the kobolds will sell you things. Mm -hmm. And I'll describe, that's something we don't have to do around the table. So you have a chance to buy stuff. So you want to start thinking in the player's handbook about stuff that you might want to buy right now. You just don't have to do it this very second. Uh, that'll be something you do between sessions. So there's new st equipment you can get. I'll send out a message about what you can get from the kobolds. Common items from the player's handbook, basically. Okay, now there are some items, obviously magic items that she's been storing that you find <laughs> in her precious possessions. I do this again in a very fast way, which you, know, you can imitate yourself if you're a DM, which is again, I'll just decide, you as adventurers, you decide to get out your dice and roll for these things. Whoever has the highest roll gets the thing at the top of my list, and I just move it on down. So you each roll a D100, which I'll introduce. Anybody have a D100? I can use a demonstration. Yeah, sure. There's that one. Yeah. And that one. yeah, so typically what you have are two ten sided dice. Oh, Let's okay. take a look at yours so there, Amy. Uh, that, yeah. so that's that's an eight sided one. So do you have any? Do you have any? Yeah, you can tell the, the faces are. Yeah. So you have to borrow somebody. Oh, okay. That's fine. But if, uh, if okay. you don't mind, Amy will borrow yours. So when you have them, you'll see them go like this. So typical, yeah, yours have a double digit number, single digit number, and yours are the same, Simon? Yeah. It's great. So, that's what it is. yeah, so, yeah. It's like we design. Exactly, exactly. So when you roll them together, you just basically add them up. What the hell is that? Is that a 90 or is That's a max, isn't it? That's it's a max? Zero. Yeah, it's just a zero, yeah. yeah. Shame doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not max, it's a minimum, because it's yeah, taking place up to zero. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's like a double zero. And this is a two. So you've rolled zero, zero plus two. So your total, well, out of 100, you got two. That's oh, a 60. You rolled two. I had <laughs> <laughs> Good point. That's a 60 and that's a 5, mm -hmm. so that'd be 65. Mm -hmm. The only weird exception is if you roll all zeros, it counts as 100. Because mm -hmm. oh, all yeah. the tables go from 1 to 100, yeah. not 0 to 99, because they're not programmers. So, <laughs> so that's the exception. So now, for real, uh, and you can borrow as you like, each of you roll a D100 and I'll write them down in order. Oh, crap. 24. 99? Whoa! So I got a 90 and a 9. That is! You got a 99! Wow. Woo! 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 Okay. Compared to each other, so so just figure out who's, so who's the highest like and the second highest. Yeah, I just get 10. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, I was going to be the bottom. I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I got 24 and I'm second out of 100. <laughs> so we're 99. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so the highest roll is 99. Who's the second highest? 24. 24 by Sid. The 99 is by Hilda. That's a I'm significant I'm so tiny, you guys just start Who's the third highest? Would that be Carrick? 11. Carrick with 11. Oops. And unluckily, maybe because they aren't your dice, you know? It's the reason yeah, you're your right, dice. Yeah. There's a 10 <laughs> for Buffy. Why did you guys get your dice? I got mine at a place in the city mm -hmm. in my yeah, shopping center. And they sell them here too. Uh, yeah, do they have, they have like sets? I, I mm -hmm. bought these yeah, ones sets. from Chesso. That's good. Brand I kind of like, I kind of like, like different ones. Like That's cool. Yeah, yeah, they, like they often sell mixed sets and things like that. That's yeah. good too. Okay. So I've just arranged these pretty much in order of value, but some of them are tied for value. It's just random. Okay. Hilda, you have first claim on this thing, and you get the boots. 
they are these very nice boots. You can tell they're magical because they're not scuffed, they're not scratched, like they don't get dusty. You, you, you try to make them dirty and they never get dirty. They must be magical. <laughs> so for now, all you know is they're boots. And what I do is I give you oh, yes. in that folder, give me that blue folder. If you have this card, you have the boots. If you don't have the card, you've lost the boots. So hold on to this. Do mm -hmm. not unfasten the following because it's folded up for Why a reason. These boots have odd looking soles. The soles of the boots are just kind of weird in, in a way that you'll have to investigate to figure out. I've also written down on this card, and uh, uh, Sid, you get a brass trumpet with a strangely small mouthpiece. <laughs> Again, obviously magical. Both of you can tell just by his construction that it's a common magic item. So their magic items are in tiers. So it's a common magic item. Which at level one, you're still pretty tough to get. It's, it's rare for a level one character, a level two character to get a, even a common magic item. Which means it's probably worth a hundred gold pieces if you could find somebody who okay. could afford it. These things are very valuable. Now it's a matter of finding it's not just anybody can buy it. But if you went to a big city and spent some time, you might be able to sell it for a hundred gold pieces. Uh, that's if it's not a one-time use. Some things that you can only use once are called a consumable, like a potion is a use once, a magic scroll, in which case it would be worth half that. But it's rare for boots to just disappear, mm -hmm. you know, so if you're guessing that's worth 100. So keep that in mind if you want to trade it uh, with other people. So what you get to do is do a little bit of investigation of what your thing is, but we'll move on to the other people, so we'll get to you in a second. So consider a skill, you each, so, so you get to use one skill one time, or you can have somebody else do the one check. But your item can tolerate right now one skill check that if you roll well enough, you'll start getting clues as to what it actually does. Otherwise, you just have to suck it and see, as they say. Carrick, you get Jop Jop Silver Visor. It was valuable enough that it ended up in the board itself. Have that. <laughs> <laughs> you could trade it. You don't know how much is valuable. As I'd long as she doesn't have it. Yeah. I'd say somewhere <laughs> between. Oh, wait, no, she's alive. No, she wants to keep it, so I'll move you down. Yeah. Don't you let her die. I'm just yeah, like exactly. wondering, like, what is she thinking while we're writing? Yeah, yeah that's nice. right. She's she's said, so we put her in the other room. She's handcuffed in a corner, she's fine. Yeah, I mean, you've been to it's drugs. like, we killed you, brought you back, and no. we need this for the fight, you know, basically. Oh it's for your own good. It's yeah, an exactly. intervention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's an intervention for her own good. Yes, you've used too many chaos orbs. Okay, it's Carrick, to correct. Uh, you get a potion. This potion is a little strange. Uh, Buffy, you get the same. Uh, so you get two potions that both look the same. So my description goes for both of you. It's a potion. You know, it's a common magic item, and which means it's worth fifty, uh, worth fifty gold pieces. So it's still quite valuable if you wanted to sell it. We're not sure what it does. Uh, immediately when we look at it, it's made of glass, and it's got, uh, it's got, it's got three layers of liquid. It's got a brown liquid, a silver liquid, and a gray liquid sort of layered on top of each other. And if you shake it, it's sort of like one of those cocktails that's layered, but it can't be, like you shake it and it redistributes, those layers are always, they're always in existence, like three different thicknesses or something. Brown, silver, and gray layers. But you can pop it open and drink it at any time. <laughs> it would be a one-time uh, consumable. Down yeah, you can down it right now. When you do your roll, so think of a skill roll that you can do to try to figure out, like, for example, this applies to all of you. It might be history, right? Like, when have you, when something of a similar description come up in history? It could be arcana, because you sense its magical power. It could be perception, because there's some little clue written on it, like there's a design on it that might you know, give you a command word or something. Um, insight, if it's intelligent. Now, you might just pick the wrong skill, in which case, you know, if, if you do insight on an object that has no mind whatsoever, I'll say, like, it doesn't have a mind. Okay. That's the end of my description. Yeah. But if it does happen to have a mind, that's the best thing to roll. If you roll really well, you'll tend to you'll tend to learn something. So pick a skill for the item, and you, again, the item will tolerate just one thing right now. Itchy adventurers that you are, I'm only going to give you time to do one. You can you can investigate more later. So when you make a move later on, you could you could figure out these items more. So this is just for now. In any order, you all can decide what you do. As you test a potion. A potion can be sipped maybe three times without reducing its power, so you can take a little sip. So, if you're if you're uh, if you want to take a sip of your potion to try to do something, you could you could use a uh, physical skill, for example. Like I'm going to sip it and I'm going to you know cut myself or slap myself <laughs> or do something else, right? <laughs> if you want to use a physical skill, or I'm going to fire my bow, you know, to see if it increases my chances of hitting. Something. You get one experiment. What is it going to be in, in any order? Can I? I haven't designed this yet. Can I? Use my persuasion to try and get Jop Jop to tell me what the trumpet is. Ah, okay, all right. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, like, again, that's that's what the skill is. So persuade her. Yeah, I mean, she might be kind of resentful, like, like <laughs> no, man, I don't want to tell you, but you can try to persuade her. Okay, good. Yeah. Sure. Roll persuasion on Jop Jop. 
benefit of keeping her alive. 11 plus 5, so 16. 16! That is good enough! Okay. Yeah. That she gives you... Let's see, 16. Yeah. It's like, all right, man, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> man, I don't like you very much. You're taking my thing. But I guess I'll give you a clue just so you shut up and leave me alone because I got a headache, she says. <laughs> all right, so Sid... Like, well, let's just say that piece on the end doesn't go in your mouth. It goes somewhere else on your body. It was a horn with a small mouth. Piece. Yeah, with a strange with a strangely small mouth. Piece. Strangely yeah. small mouth. Piece. Maybe it's an inverted. Yeah, maybe it's to listen. <laughs> you could try <laughs> as part of you, you could immediately do one. <laughs> you could do one thing with it as a reaction before I move. I don't know what comes out. Of yeah, you know, you have one in your mouth, man. <laughs> you okay. got one somewhere else. <laughs> okay. She's looking at you. Right. I'm <laughs> You yeah, can I think I'm like by trying to put it in her mouth. So she <laughs> tolerates that. That's not nice. <laughs> Consent, please. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've already handcuffed her, and I think yeah. You're the one who wanted to save her. <laughs> and I did. It doesn't mean that we can't shove what this in her mouth. I mean, we haven't given her a safe word. We can't really do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think yeah. I think maybe you hold it up to my ear, like a, you're listening to a seashell, maybe. As you do. You know? Yes. Um, okay. You put it to your ear. Give me your card. I can reveal a little bit more. Ooh. Yes, as you put it up to your ear, it fits in your ear. And as you do it, you know that as unlimited charges, whatever it does, it won't deplete over time. Because that's one of the, one of the first things you want to do. So you have, to, you have to hold it up to your ear with a free hand. This is an item interaction. And as you do so, you can hear normally. Like, what's the big deal? And Job Job's like, how's the, how's the sound? Is my voice loud now? It's like her voice sounds the same. So, OK, but you know it's a magic item. And you know it's supposed to go in the ear. And it doesn't, but it doesn't change what you hear. There's a little bit more to discover, or you just keep experimenting with it in various situations. So now you know that much about it. So let me write that down. Okay. Meanwhile, somebody else decide what you're doing. Um, as I'm going to just use my perception to um, see something about the potion. Okay, right on. Let me just write something about Sid. Mm. Great, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so uh, 12 plus 3, 15. Awesome, okay, I'll get to that in just a moment. That's good enough to get some success. Let me figure it out. Okay. 15, Buffy, you take a look at that potion with your perception with a 15. Yeah, okay, that's great. As you look around, Buffy, um, and I don't, I don't have a card for the, these other items because the, they're common enough that you can sort of write down once you figure it out. You realize the color of uh, the different layers of liquid it exactly matches the color of the cave walls. Like the cave that the caves you're in, have a bunch okay. of, sort of igneous rock of various yeah. layers. And you realize that this thing, it looks like the color of the layers of rock. Um, so that gives you a clue they could go do later on. You're pretty sure this has something to do with, with walls, with, with, with rock, with something like that. It looks exactly like rock. It has something to do with rock. Okay. Okay. So that's a clue that you got because mm -hmm. your role was, was good but not enough to get the whole thing. Uh, now, knowing that, you might do a different experiment that then because you know they're the same potion. So whatever you figure out, I, mean, one, you know, I was also going to use perception. So would that give me no additional? Probably not. Yeah, it's probably okay. better to do something different or even experiment. You could do a sip and do an experiment. Really don't want to do it's that. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a sip. If it's bad, it'll damage you a little bit, but not the full dose. Um, well, if it's cursed, it'll, it'll damage you fully. Uh, but it's generally, uh, and you want to mark down that you can only sip it a few times before you just kind of decide to down it. But as long as it doesn't do an area of effect thing, we will get a hit for like ten hit points of damage or something. <laughs> um. Crap. Would survival tell us anything about it? Um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it could be that, uh, that if, it's a, if it's something that's useful for survival than just having read Survival Weekly scroll, uh, you probably would have learned, heard about this thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, so a good survival role would definitely give you information. Or investigation. I think I might want to use investigation. Yeah, investigation, you have to like do little sort of experiments on it, and without sipping it, I, I think that's probably take, the only... Take a sip. Come yeah. on, take a I think that's prepared to sit <laughs> because... Yeah, what a drink. Yeah. How many points are you got them all right? <laughs> all right, I guess I'm going to sip it. Okay, so you take <laughs> one sip of it. I die, I hate you, Buffy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a potion of instant death. Yeah. Okay, now use investigation, which I'm means... Here. So, So now, w during the few seconds after you sip it, you want to do a quick experiment before it wears out, because it wears very quickly. So yeah, it, investigation would just be like, oh, you just try to think log you try to think logically how it feels, or you can try to do some sort of action of some sort. So. What's the one thing that you do? It could be an investigation check or some other action. Well, I feel like I'd, I'd use perception on how I'm feeling. 
Uh, yeah, be maybe insight uh, would insight. be like self insight. Right. Self insight. Okay, roll self insight. Oh, that twenty, and I have plus six. Ooh. Woo! Dude, fantastic! I'm hoping I'm not dead. <laughs> no, you know what exactly what this is. How many damage you do to yourself? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> you drink it, and you're like, this is Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> You think back on uh, when the fight in the cobalt room happened, and we had those two had to climb all the way up all those sort of like ropes and ladders and things, and then the, the guy had to do a lot of athletic climbing, and you're like, I could never do that. I'm scared of heights. I have no power. But in this moment, yourself inside is like, that's that doesn't scare me. And then a few seconds later, it's like, oh wait, it scares me again. You're sure this is what the, 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 for both of you. It's a potion of climbing. Climbing. Potion of climbing is very useful, and because you rolled so well, I'll tell you exactly what it's like. It is a common item. It's worth 50 gold pieces. So you're sure of that. So yeah, it's very easy to sell because these things are very handy for anybody who's you know survival minded. When you drink it for one hour, you have special climbing powers. Your climb speed, you get a climb speed, which equals your walk speed. That means that you don't have to do a check. You can just climb a, a, a very difficult to climb wall. Only like a sheer impossible wall is, is something that you can't reach. If it can possibly be climbed with a really great roll, you don't even have to roll for it. Yeah. So it gives you the ability to climb a difficult cliff and these last for an hour. Uh, so 30 feet, so one moving go up, up a wall, 30 feet, even if it's a very difficult wall. Like these cave walls or should be all climbable that way. You also have advantage on climb checks, because there's some things where uh, it might require a climb check, but the climb speed doesn't apply. Uh, like if you're getting knocked off a ladder, it makes you do a climb check. So let's write that down. So for one hour, climb speed equals walk speed, and advantage on climb checks. And that so was a really one-time consume. One time consume. But very useful in the right situation. That's all for both, because fortunately you both had the exact that. thing. <laughs> all right. Well, that was item stuff. You now can trade freely. So if one of you has an item that the other one wants, you now have some yeah. money. You have some yeah. items. You can trade them with each other. You do it amongst yourselves. That uh, doesn't matter to me. I have not investigated my item yet. Oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, what are you going to do? First quick question. Is oh, yes, this the only investigation we're doing? Down wrong. Huh? Is this the only investigation we're doing? What are you planning? The only one you get for free. So you get to do one for free when you find it, then and then you have to spend like a session stamp okay. beforehand or during this investigation session you have to focus on I don't on know it. if I really want to investigate these shoes yet. It's really easy. It's, it's a free okay. thing, but you don't, you don't have to, but it's really free. It's basically cost free. I want to get another shard because I feel bad I'm the only one without a kale shard. Oh, okay. All so right. But that could be a subject of your upcoming investigation, as you can say, I'm oh, going to get another chaos chart. So we're yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Leave, save that for this a little bit later. This is a freebie. Later. This is a freebie. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll then. Um, I just want to put on the shoes, to be honest. I feel like I would just... I have perception. <laughs> no, no. Put them on. But I think I'll just put the shoes on. Okay. You know? Yeah. You when you put them on, you can then... Do they fit? Yeah. Oh, they fit perfectly. Oh, like, oh, And I think like they perfectly conformed your feet. Yeah, That's I really good. They would. What does every adventurer do when they put an item on that they're worried about? What's the first thing to do when you put on an item? See if you can take it off. So you see, yeah, so <laughs> she can. can you take those off? I'm try and take them off. Yeah. <laughs> she can take them off, yes. Because <laughs> cursed items you can't take off. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, it's not so you know, cursed. you know it's not cursed. Yeah, so you put them back on. So you can do one again. You can do an action. You can do a skill. You can do something that they think. Well, what are these things? Things good at? You're not sure. At. I'm gonna just do a bunch of athletic tricks. Okay. Just jump around. Yeah. Okay. Jump from like. Cushion to cushion. Good. So uh, roll. Like a little chat in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so roll an athletics roll here. That's a d20. Yeah, d20 plus your athletics. That's a 19. A 19. Plus okay. Plus athletics. So. Okay. Okay. That's good. Athletics doesn't suit this very well, but so it means that, that that you don't get as much information as if you have the mm -hmm. right skill. But there's something weird, like as you as, as you move around, like the soles of your feet make odd sounds, like like when every time you land and move. You know, there's something in your mind like it seems like the boots are kind of asking you a question, but you're not sure. You're not sure what language it speaks in a way. Like you think you He's could, you think you'd be tell, you think you'd be telling the boots to do something. And and, <laughs> and, yeah. and 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 as you're as you're sort of randomly sort of thinking different things, you notice that as you're jumping around, every time you land, your boots make a slightly different noise. Oh my god! Like sometimes make a loud noise. So later on, you can do. I maybe was an gonna insight. do inside, but then you were like, it has to be sentient. If it has no, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's a pair of shoes. Maybe they're platform shoes, and as a dwarf, you're like, oh, extra height, you know. Yeah. I, know, I was just on. like, it's a pair of shoes, so I doubt it's got a brain, but. It Turns out I'm the one with the brain one. <laughs> Give me that card. I think I can reveal so something. You said it was speaking, but you couldn't understand it. Well, it's just it feels like it, like it's it's you could mentally give it a command of some sort. Okay. So all that you know, um, uh, can I borrow your pencil? Yeah. So I've got twenty shoes. <laughs> so you know that there's no charges. You know it's got unlimited charges. Okay. 
So you know that 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 by trying this, you're not slowly wearing them down. You could you could experiment yeah. with it all, but it just takes time to do. And being an itchy adventurer, we're going to move on, and you can you can deva devote yourself to more investigation later. Okay. Okay. There's more time for you to find your shard. Kind of annoyed. I could have taken as one of my invocations. Uh, identify objects. Oh <laughs> well, <laughs> you can't be everything. Well, we can still identify. Trade with each other. Anybody want to do a trade? Mm -hmm. Swap. Sell them things to each other. Yeah. We can always trade things. Um, I feel like to be honest, the person who would get the most use out of like a horn of hearing, like for identifying things, would be a rogue to like sneak up on things. Yeah, so you can give so it to them. Yeah, well, depending on what the yeah, boots give can things do too. Yeah, goodness of your heart. I mean, if they're like a stealthy, yeah, boots that could usually be are really good for them. So, but I don't know enough about this yeah. yet. Yeah, we can figure out more, and my then when you get back, she gets like a surprise. Shit, I, yeah. like I should get it. I mean, my whole character's thing is disguise, so holding up a horn to his ear might not might be a bit of a giveaway if he's trying to disguise. Depends on the worst of the disguise. Play old people. Yeah, yeah, all person. And I Sorry, can what was that? What's up, Shani? <laughs> like like disguise self pet it does extend to like objects, so I could pretend it's like I don't know anything as small or big as I want. You could trick people to like drink out of it, like she said. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Something bad happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the mouth of it. My other arm is do drink. Don't know how talented you This are. thing's called suppository. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> all right. Uh, Remember, you can uh, make moves either in game on those rare chances I give you a chance in game to make a move, or you come early, spend a stamp, and you can do more things. And generally, what you'll do is you'll, you'll succeed, you'll fully figure out your item by spending a, a stamp or more, depending on how good your roll is. Remember, you're sort of guaranteed success if you do something before uh -huh. a session. Yeah. 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 yeah, you totally understand your. Nothing more to do there. It was a potion. Shopping between sessions, so Sounds I'll send out a link. That they failed to identify this. The kobolds will sell you items. Generally, what they sell is items that can be made in a machine shop. I'll describe it more, but if you want armor, a weapon, shields, whatever else, they can make that. They can't make food. They can't make a dog. They can't make, you know, but they might have rope or something like that. So, you know, it's just just think of things that are plausibly something that the kobolds could make or might have in their machine shop. They're eager to sell things to you because they love money. We'll get to that in a moment. Also, you can even do more where you can pretend that, oh, Jop Jop didn't, so instead of some coins that I got from Jop Jop, she actually had an item that I want. You can basically rewrite the story a little bit. And it's, it's almost like, it's like shopping. So pretty much anything in the player's handbook, you can justify having found in Jop Jop's room. You just give up some of the money that you found and pretend, oh, instead of finding this money, I found this item instead. So just think about that stuff. You don't decide that now, decide between sessions. I'll send out a link. So great opportunity to get, to get more stuff. Thousand gold piece for a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> for a spyglass, it's the most expensive thing. Is anybody wow. here? Nobody here has a spell book anymore, do they? Prayer book now. No. Prayer book. Well, it's so interesting because it's before. Have a book. Yeah. Um, well, when they come, I'll catch them up on this stuff, so they do get yeah. a chance to catch up on some of this in, in a limited way for not the session. Uh, it's interesting. One of the things you want, like, oh, you want to fill out that spell book. You might look sort of longingly or think longingly of the spell book <laughs> that turned into a prayer book because you know, think, oh, you know, Jop Jop probably. If I look in enough places, she probably has spell book pages around here somewhere that you could transcribe. But you're no longer a wizard. You're yeah, that, those days are I over. Study this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you? Are you? What are you? I'm a cleric. Oh. I'm just a different religion. Oh, okay. All right. But, yeah. Uh, you but all I've got a Bible. Just as try well. hard. Uh. <laughs> All right, you all get 25 <laughs> XP for just doing you know, a little bit of experimenting oh. and talking and sharing and stuff so like that. that's 400. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's like a Is that just a sticky in the front of you? Yeah. That's so cute. All right. Now, oh, investigation is the next step. We'll do a little bit of this, we'll take a break, and we'll do more of it. So uh, so if one of you has a clear no, idea of what else. you want to investigate or do, I'm looking this at my is your chance to demonstrate it. They'll talk about it. Oh, process. can I have my pencil back? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got five. I brought spares over there. Oh, that's fine. I might need it, but I'll, uh, I'll so grab it later. Five five Sorry. What, we're, up to, we're up to 400. It gave us 25. Oh, really? Yeah, we had 25 so because of that little combat, and 25 one. because you've been playing around with items and sharing what you know. Thank you. Okay. So, what you're going to do is a wise you call, oh, you get to make a move, right? So, you can do it before play, but now you get to do it here at play, and you don't have to spend a stamp for it. You just get it. So, there's a couple things with making a move. One thing that you might do is investigate a mystery. And when you do that, Mysteries are great because knowledge is power in this world. You might figure out, oh, you know, just for adventure's sake, you might figure out there's something else in the world that you think is just really cool. And maybe you could do it right away, or maybe you put on your to-do list your little quest log of things to do later on. Because this world is very expansive. You get to share secrets with other people who've played Courage and Chaos. You know, you have many parallel worlds and everybody discovers different things. 
And when you go to the pub, you get to talk to each other and share those secrets. I very much encourage people to give spoilers as long as it's done in person. If you're doing it in person, you know, at a bar or whatever, you can tell each other all the stuff you discover. Knowledge is power. Where to go, great things to see. You might find some more challenges to do. You might have uh, new allies. You might discover, like, oh, here's, you'll discover pretty soon that what you want to have is things besides just yourselves. You want to have a resource or an ally or a location, you know, that also gives you more power to do things in the world. So you find out more things there. Yeah, so there's a few reasons there. And just satisfy curiosity. Some people get very curious about what's actually going on. <laughs> so I have this process coming up. Uh, I, you don't have to pair up. There's only four of us. So, so let's play this the normal way. That's good. And I'm going to suggest a few things that you might want to investigate, but you can do something completely different. I'm ready for anything. I've, I've hopefully seen it all, or I can make it up and pretend that I've seen it before. Here's one that I want you all to make a decision right away, and you can drive it further. You have to deal with your cobalt allies. So your cobalt allies, they're, they're eagerly waiting for a cue from you what to do. During that RP battle, you might remember, you convince them, like, we will, you know, we had, like, the dragon dance, like, we will free you from slavery. Tiamat sent us, you know, to give you glory. Yeah. And so, like, okay. Yeah, it's like, uh, Dak was like, yeah, so, uh, you know, tell us about the, you know, the, the whole thing with Tiamat. You know, like, <laughs> you got a plan. And, like, we need to make more money. Uh, you know, like, the, the black uh, acid dragon, uh, as, you, as you figured out, not really happy with us. <laughs> like, uh, 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 BB was, I think, taking money and like <laughs> putting in his eyeballs. If you know what I mean. So I think the dragon hasn't been really happy. But you know, even if you know, with BB um, out, I don't, how is BB anyway? Anyway, so even if BB stops doing that, <laughs> uh, now that you're here, um, I, I don't know if the dragon's getting enough money. <laughs> uh, the dragon kind of wants lots of money and kind of wants more every time we bring it. So you said you had an idea that you know you're here to set us free so that we can you know we want to worship the black ass dragon. Like we want to give it more money. Uh, and but we're working for like. The, the, the goblins and Ziggy uh, and you know, all that stuff, you know, we don't like it. We're not making enough money and they're bastards, you know. We're working in a machine shop, you know. We, we want to maybe rob things, like maybe if you want to, we can all go out together and, and rob people. Like go, go to those, those farming villages, you could probably steal much better stuff than the goblins do. Or, you know, like those kobolds that kidnapped you, we can set up like an ambush spot as carriages go by, we can like take all their stuff. Uh, or, yeah, I know you're adventurers and maybe you have like other ideas. So. Uh, you know, what, what, he, what he wants to do. So what they're proposing is you have a sort of a, a branch here. You can say, no, just go back to what you're doing. You know, just forget what we said about saving you. That'll come later. We'll, we'll save you from your bondage later, but go back to your jobs. Their regard for you will go down a little bit because right now they're eager to, to do something, but it has to be something that fits their agenda. It has to be something that makes them lots of money, and they want you to, like, you to bring it to the Black Acid Dragon, for you to become the new worshippers. Like, the Black Acid Dragon would love to have a bunch of adventurers, uh, uh, adventurers worshipping him and bringing him treasure and doing what he wants. You know, he's a dragon. He wants minions. So they're very excited about this. And they, they, they thought, because of the whole RP battle he did, like, you're kind of on board with, you know, yeah, sure, we'll help you with that Black Acid Dragon and impress it. You can say, um, yeah, we'll do that later. Don't call us, we'll call you. In which case, you know, the regard, they'll still be your allies. They just won't be super enthusiastic allies because, you know, they want their agenda. So that's one option. Just refute this expectation and all that. You're still fine. But your option number two is say, like, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll find a way to give lots of money to this black ass of dragon. You know, and we will work, and you're kind of on your honor to do it. So I'll keep track. If you're not actually doing something every day to make the kobolds feel like you're actually working toward this goal, the kobolds will get quite pissed off at you. So you don't want to promise this unless you intend to follow through. It's better just to say, no, we're not going to do that yet. That's better than saying you'll do it and then not actually doing it. So it's a bit of a moral choice. It's a bit of an ambition choice. Do you want to let the kobolds go back to what they were doing? Or do, you want to, or do you want to convince them to, uh, to, to change their business plan as long as it results in more money for the Black Acid Dragon? What do you do? Talk amongst yourselves. So we can't just like save them now. Could we convince them to open up a store? We can't like. Let's go find a dragon. Yeah, the yeah, only thing, can the they only get deal? legit? Yeah. Yeah, the only thing they're unhappy with is working for the goblins and this guy. It? They oh, say, they they say they're, 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 having, they're having to do this machine stuff. But they like the dragon. Yeah, but they love the dragon. You can't oh, okay. convince them. Yeah, no, okay. the other, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't convince them not to love the dragon. They're okay. all kobolds are all about worshiping dragons, and they got one. Oh, but they just don't like the goblins. Yeah, they don't like the goblins. Well, they don't. They don't like the fact they're not making very much money. The goblins are stealing this stuff. 
Well, the goblins are the, the customer, yeah, exactly. Selling it to the kobolds. Yeah. The kobolds are uh, the mining mine. and then selling that to the gnolls. No, the kobolds make so machines they sell to the gnolls. So okay. they make those mechs, you know, like Havilar and other stuff in that big So the gnolls are the one doing the actual mining? Yeah, the gnolls do the actual mining. So okay. so the, the gnolls want equipment from the kobolds. The kobolds are making equipment, mining equipment. Yeah. Anyway, I the goblins are doing what, sorry? The goblins are bringing the raw materials. Okay. They're bringing all the machinery parts that are necessary to, to keep this operation going. So with that supply chain, we can't affect the dragon. Mm -hmm. But what we could do is maybe negotiate a better deal on the goblin on the null side. We could convince him to open up a store in mm. town. Go to the jet. Yeah, but what's Legitimate supplying the town? It's going to be, like, it's supplying the shop. They just have, like, a bunch of random stuff. I mean, it's not all machines. Stealing machines. It doesn't to have to be. Yeah, kobolds are multi-talented. They live I mean, in a cave. They could, like, give you a bunch yeah. of jewels. Kobolds are very, they're very shards. smart and, and they, industrious. They're, 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 small and in, like, they're not interested in making money for any reason. Like, just to give to the dragon. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah, they want to give as much shiny treasure to the dragon. The dragon demands shiny treasure, and they would love to give more shiny treasure to the dragon. Dragon, cutting they out the they, middle they're worshipping the dragon. Mm. I'm just saying that, like, I mean, can yeah, we just not teach them to mine the no, shards themselves? I don't think so, because here's the thing we really do have only two options it's either we tell them no or we tell them yes. And I do and not think we should tell them yes because we don't want to have this whole weight on our shoulders. You have an obligation to actually give them towards their to goals. a bunch of kobolds who are donating money, to, who are giving money to a dragon. I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm we all here that, don't yeah. really like <laughs> dragons, especially that, yeah. you. I eat the black I'm not a dragon. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I don't like dragons either. I haven't heard good things, so I do not think we should do option two. Yeah, like, I think we have to choose morally, the, the I don't think evil. any of us would have done that. Unless we can well, think of like a really brilliant it. idea, it has to be one or something yeah. else. Yeah. Mm. But what's going to be the I price of one. saying yeah. It's probably well, gonna be like, that. They uh, come you're come pretty sure it's like they're really excited, but you're pretty sure that you can let them down gently by saying like, "Yeah, that's a good idea," but we're a little busy with some other stuff, so we'll get back to you. And they'll be like, "Oh, they'll be a little compass. disappointed. They'll still, be, like, they'll still be, they'll still be your friends. They want to like attack a ritual, you." And then yeah. once you complete the ritual, we'll come back and we never do. <laughs> <laughs> you just play me the ghost. Yeah, ghost them. Once you get to a certain level of worshiping, then we will reward you, and so they just keep dancing until they just keep on. Get a better haircut. Get some better clothes, lose some weight, and then, you know, we'll talk. That kind of thing. No, we'll we'll like, just throw, like, a party. And once the party <laughs> reaches, like, a great status, we'll come back. So at least yeah. I'll be, like, enjoying <laughs> themselves. Then we go off adventuring, and there'll be, like, a kobold that will find us every time. We're like, hey, is this a good look? Are you happy yet? Can no. you come back? And we're no. like, no, at no, no. At the same time, if we go off adventuring... Doesn't that leave the kobolds with not enough equipment for the gnolls, and the gnolls are just going to attack? They'll be able to recover. I mean, they got set back by the demon possession thing, but you think they'll slowly recover? You know, the machines got possessed by demons, got wrecked, but they think they can do that, and they'll basically go back. So they'll go back to status quo, ante, right? They'll, they'll yeah. go back to what they're doing before you showed up, which is yeah. just getting back to work. But they'll, they'll still be your allies. They'll still be able to sell you could, stuff. Could the third option be just to kill them? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if we do nothing, like yes, that is an option. If we do nothing, what have we achieved in the last years? We killed people and <laughs> wreaked havoc, and we, we leave, and habits. nothing has changed. Well, we haven't improved the world at all. <laughs> like, I don't get. I mean, I the I do think we should usurp BD. You're a shit leader. Put Dak Dak in charge. Right, yeah, no, by. No, Dak Dak is like a psychopath. <laughs> and Bibi isn't? Because what you might do. Bibi's a drugged psycho! Uh, so if you pick Dr. option one and say, no, no, go back to what you're doing, then you can immediately start using your moves and say, now we're going to use our moves to, to, to build a lasting business. That's not about paying. You know, maybe they, they want to make money that pays the dragon, but they might do something that's more to your end. So you can, so you can then work in the future to steer them back, right? So option one says, Look, unless we do something different, you're going to go back to doing whatever you did. But the world is very plastic. I mean, you're heroes, so you could you could keep changing the kobolds. This is just what do you want them to do next? Go back to status quo, or instantly get excited and say super excited about you because you're going to work every day on 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 taking tribute to the <laughs> black dragon and impressing the black dragon and you know sh showing the black dragon that you're willing to do favors for it. That's kind of what you want to do. Uh, yeah, that's no, exhausting. I don't want to do that. The magic okay. life of Brian. He is the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> all past you, Cobalt. All right. round. Okay, so just to be formal, uh, raise your hand if you want to help the Black Dragon. Okay, so no, so we're gonna do option one. That's fine. That's fine. And Dag's like, huh, yeah, well, yeah, I know your your adventures. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess we'll I kind of respect that. Yeah, I know, like. You know, it's just I just gotta say, you know, like you adventures, you're wrong about dragons. That's all I gotta say. I know, I know, you, I know you have stories. You know, Buffy, I, I heard, I already said to Buffy, I already said to Dragon Back. <laughs> this dragon's awesome. Like this dragon's oh, really powerful. Like, Adam, like, he a breathes acid, really Buffy. Buffy, like, Buffy he breathes acid. Like, do you know what like dragon acid can do? <laughs> it can dissolve anything. I mean, like, 
know. Isn't that cool? It can no, dissolve anything. Cool. Anyone. Dissolve anything. My I mean, <laughs> they, they can fly. You know, it can fly, Buffy. I mean, they can pick you up and carry you around. They're awesome. Talk to me about this. How much do you think it's worth? So, 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 Dak Dak is like, ah, oh, yeah, typical. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, typical, typical adventures. Oh, no, all dragons are bad. Ah, fine. Okay, fine, fine. We'll just go back to our jobs. That's fine. But he, he sulks a little bit, but you know, that, that he still makes it. Okay. Okay, so now, if you care to control anything in the world, including the, the kobolds, we'll move on to the next step, which is uh, what you are doing. What's your top priority? So, a few things that might be of interest. The kobolds are, you know, are, are uh, something you can manipulate. Uh, Thogrim, you saved him. Uh, so uh, you might be able to, you know, so you might investigate, like, what's Thogrim about? What's the story? Uh, she, what, what's, what's her story? What, why was she there? How do you sort of get into her confidence, you know, just sort of unlock the mystery of Thogrim? The gnolls are a problem. Like, you hear about these gnolls that are coming and they are part of the supply chain. They're the ones that buy the machines and do the mining. So you can basically investigate the gnolls, uh, try to figure out, you know, if you can co-opt the gnoll somehow or fight off the gnolls or whatever else. So just, you know, answer questions about that. Torg, the red ghost. Uh, ah. Torg is your ally. You know, Torg is oh. hanging back there and oh. seems to really, oh, really oh. like you all. It's fine. You know, he's a ghost. He's been there for hundreds of years. He doesn't mind waiting for you. So you don't <laughs> think there's any reason they have to do it right now. But he's an ally they could develop further. Any NPC, so basically anything listed, you know, in the world that you want to sort of learn more about or manipulate a little bit is ready to go. Um, a couple things maybe personal to you. Carrick, you have advantage on the orrery. There's that big set of bronze hoops that is one of the reasons you got kidnapped. And you know the kobolds are very excited that you seem to know how to operate it. Um, and it's not maybe clear. I can the letdown. <laughs> it's not clear why, uh, but you could focus not on, on the kobolds so much as, as the orrery. They definitely want to give you act. The, if they'll let you. They won't let you take the orrery away, but you can play with the orrery and figure out what the hell is important about that. Uh, Hilda. Uh, there's memories you would be like my brother my brother you're very interested in your brother this is I probably will do the backstory more as people get here yeah. but there's something that has to do with like you know uh, if you say I want to spend my move on basically figuring out where my brother is or, or delve into that I'll basically I'll do as much as I can at the table yeah. but then I'll come back the next session and give you all the answers because I'll yeah. figure out the backstory stuff next time I talk to people uh, it might be a little early to do brother stuff but I know how eager you are so if yeah. you want to do something regarding your brother that you really want to do then we, I can uh, do something there there we go so what you do is brainstorm a little bit, right? Um, so you can uh, just figure out, each of you will pick one thing, and you yourself get to pick one thing. But you might give each other ideas or split up your efforts, or, oh, I'll do this first, and if that works, then I'll do this follow-up thing. So talk for a little while about what you most want to do. So I'm going to discuss the Feywild more. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering I'm really who's better, kobolds or Torg? Both of them can't speak full sentences. <laughs> just curious, who would know more? I am curious about talk. So if somebody wants to like ask him about do his I life story, that'd be great. I I am the he's focus. got a good connection. Yeah, do I still have that connection with talk considering I persuaded him that because he thinks you're an author. Yeah. yeah, if you're the one talk so depending on which one pursues it, it might give you like an extra plus one in your role because okay. you are especially close. That's right. And I also have the connection with that um half orc what's the name? The academic? Uh, uh, Thalgrim. Yeah, yeah, so the, she, she was the one that uh, yeah, was saved, and, yeah. uh, and you don't know what she's about. I wonder if how will I think about this. Yeah. I, I want to talk to Thalgrim, to be honest, to yeah. half orc, because yeah. I want to know what she's doing there, why they wanted to. Yeah, you're all talking to yourself, so I'm, I'm just taking notes. Yeah, in particular, you want to talk Oh, I want to learn about chaos shards, because we have these things, but we don't know what they do. Mm. So yeah. I want to just one for me, one. That'd be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I have one that's in my backpack, yeah. but I'd like maybe. I'd, it's not charged though. If you don't no. go into the mushroom, I don't. Room, oh, I, I, don't I, don't, I don't. I don't want to wear mine. Yeah. Like, hmm? it's yeah, you can still discover things if, about it despite yeah. the fact you're not wearing it. That's if you don't go into the mushroom room to like kind of charge it up with Check your it memory, mm -hmm. is it like kind of a bit pointless? That's one thing that you would discover the answer to. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah, the that fact like, oh, says you should definitely ripen cool. it. That makes it worth a lot of money, but you're not. Okay. You, you have a feeling it's probably good for a variety of things besides just what the kobolds want you to do. Okay. But yeah, that's what I want. What do you want to do? Um, I'm really curious about the Feywild stuff mm -hmm. and what's going on there. Yeah, I'm also and, curious and about whether Havilah's got any information for us, but I feel like with the Nat 20 roll, I probably should be using the way. Who's Havilah? Havilah was the dragonborn that I iced. Mm. That you oh, iced? Oh, I remember that. Like, I spell. Huge. Like, oh. one point. Yeah. 
Dra what does dragonborn mean? They're like dragon. Um, humanoid, yeah, humanoid, humanoid, but, but like with dragon, dragon features, dragon scales. You weren't a fan. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah with, uh, with the dragon, with a dragon black face. Dragon oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So oh, she's. But yeah. that's like a real like ancestor. Because yeah, dragons. so she's she's inherited her blood from a black acid dragon. Black oh, dragon usually breathes like, acid. Okay. And at the moment, she's still chained up in the mech. Yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, It's like being half dragon. Yes, with a single hit point. That's right. Yep, yeah, so yeah, you just get to zoom in on any one thing. So do you figure you've all got an idea? Yeah, yeah. I think I know what I have to do. Okay, so which of you, just as an example, wants to do it first? I'll go. Okay, so Seven. you are interested in the Feywild. All right, Seven. so here's what we do. Okay. So what does success look like? So you want to ask a question like if, so what's a question the answer to you want me to answer, right? So just don't worry work about your skills yeah. or your tactics. At the very highest level, what's the thing that you want to have happen, or what's the thing you want to know the answer to? You know, what's a like a one sentence description of what success looks like? How did that portal come to be? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I think I have to ask the kobolds. Yeah, we'll get to tactics in a moment. But your main okay. thing is like how okay. the Feywild so portal come, I'll, I'll stretch out like come to be, what can it do, etc. Okay. Now you all be able to participate a bit in this, so uh, so as you go, you can all you can help uh, Hilda out with this particular investigation. So you got a good question. Uh, I'm going to set a timer, and just a real world timer, and this is a chance for you all to brainstorm a bit, for you to come up with dis uh, decisions on what you think will help answer this question, and then you'll do a roll, and then I talk. So the timer has to fit everything in that regard. Before I start the timer, I'll give you a little preview. You're going to want to think of, you'll collectively think of, again, world facts, just like we did before the, the session started. I said, what's something you already know is true about the world that you think is relevant to this mystery? Mm -hmm. Like, just what are things you remember being in the cave or about yeah. the Feywild? Things that are from your own backstory. You can even fudge a little bit and say, well, I'm, I'm going to make this part of my backstory by saying it. You can kind of make up a little bit of your backstory on the fly. I only ask you to kind of write it down and commit to it. Um, uh, you can also say, well, I think this is true. So here's a, something that, that I believe is true about the world and it might be worth a point or not. Yeah. All of these things I write down, your only limit is the timer. So every time that anybody says something, I say, okay, wait a minute, I've got to write it down in a certain category, and then I ask for another thing. So you want to kind of rotate around so nobody dominates the conversation. You have the lead, mm -hmm. but you know everybody else who contributes, let's make sure you're giving each other time. When the time gets low enough, say, okay, there's no more time for, for these world facts, now it's time for you to roll. When you roll, however many, I'll reveal how many world facts are relevant with these beads, and you add that to your roll. Yeah. So you'll ha use a particular skill as usual. So it'll be yeah. investigation or religion and the mm -hmm. usual thing. The skill that you pick will change the nature of the information you get, but a high roll is always going to be pretty good. So the points. Yeah. Are they what we as players know or what we the characters know? Uh, it, they're, they're the same thing, yeah. So you okay. as players, you might have heard at the pub, uh, okay. you might have heard it as a character, so don't don't worry about the limits between your character's knowledge and your own okay. knowledge. Yeah, so if you happen to know a lot about the Feywild because you've read a lot of books on D&D Beyond, feel free to use that, that's great. Okay. But everything you say in those sentences or two, I'm going to have to stop and write down, so you can't just throw a lot of things at the wall. You're going to have to, in the, with, yeah. as the time goes, you just have to <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I will start the timer now, and uh, you, you get the first. So, is there, what's, what's a fact about the world you think is relevant? Well, everything that I recently found out in my investigation. Yeah, just name something specific. Okay, um, the fact that the elven people were running away from a creature. Yeah. So okay. It's obviously an elven part of the Feywild. Okay, very good. So I've written that down. What I've done, I've written down it's useful, true, but not useful or not true. So that's one okay. thing. Okay, and you can go again or, or hand the floor to somebody else. I literally know nothing about but I speak Elvish. Does that mean anything? <laughs> Probably not, because I'm going to talk to a bunch of kobolds. Yeah, mm. I don't. I, yeah. Know, I know nothing about this. I'd say speaking Elven, it, it might be, so I'll, I'll write it down. Because anything anybody says, I, I will always categorize anything, and I'll, I'll explain I why like it's... Uh, Elven, um, I mean, I'm from, my character's from high Elven background, and he was kind of classically educated, and plus three in history, so I'm assuming he probably knows a bit about stories okay. and the lore of the Feywild. Sure. So yeah. does it, the elves come from the Feywild? Yes. Yeah, originally. They're from Fey ancestry. Okay, I've written that down somewhere. Anybody else got something? Um, well, the legends of the uh, Eladrin coming from the Feywild and mm -hmm. um, a race of elves that were particularly connected to nature and like actually shifted form based on seasons. Oh, okay, good. Okay, very good. I guess um, I also know about Feywild creatures 
just the, just the, the very unknown mostly so I oh, don't yeah. know but like that's the thing like I know that because of your thing, skills and things like that like, I know that like things that I've never seen before sure like yeah 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 so I say you know a lot about creatures in general based on I think the end it might include fake creatures so that might be relevant okay, okay. I've still got another minute or two to collect this before we start talking. I mean, like, my plan but of course, the less time that you contribute, yeah. the more time mm -hmm. I have to talk. So my plan is to talk to the um, kobold that wanted to side with us earlier on. Get his name, sadly. Mm. But and to use my inside, which is plus three. Okay. Kind of Tell me more about the kobold that wanted to, to side with us. Um, so he, at, he, at the very beginning, name. he was like saying, um, "We can convince him." And then we had the whole jury selection Dac thing. Oh Dac yeah. Dac okay. I want oh, to talk to Dak Dak. Dak. Okay, great, yeah. Because he seems to be the nicest. Yeah. Seems to like us. I yeah. don't know. I think the only thing I could say to soften the blow is maybe, um, I don't even really know what I can say. <laughs> soften the blow. I don't know where sure. I was going with that. I'll just be nice to him. Okay. Talk, yeah, so talk to his level. We'll use our high test common now. Yeah, yeah. So good. So, so that's great. Come so up very, very friendly. In my equipment, I've got a book of lore, um, which I'm getting along with as part of my scholar's pack. Okay, so, so this is where the soft focus can snap into it. Mm -hmm. So you'll 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 f commit that to be a, yep. a book of Elven lore. You just can't change it to something else later on. Great, that okay. makes sense for a character. Yeah. And when we did our rolls before, I had like a twenty-six on identifying that it was a Feywild portal, and that this yeah. was some, a thin layer between the two worlds. Yes, that could potentially be opened. Okay, very good. Great. By the way, what's stonework? Uh, just anything made of stone. Is there anything made of stone here? Uh, well, you can mention it's it. Okay. I'll, 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 so, so I'll, I'll say I'll mention that you got stone work, but now we're out of time. Stone cunning. So yeah. I'm very proficient in stone. I don't okay. know. It's if a I like stone say cunning? a cool fact. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll work it in. Yeah. So I'll, uh, if it's relevant, I'll mention it there. Okay. Great. So that's all we got for brainstorming. That's okay. cool. Hang nice. on. It's a light gothic architecture. That's what we got. Yeah. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Whoever designed this, it was just like, what? We have those three layers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I will now reveal things that are relevant or not. And I'll, every time I give you B, this is going to be plus one in your roll. Okay, um, this isn't necessarily in priority order. Uh, all right, so one thing that's relevant is that book of elven lore by Sid. I mean, how this is customized for this, this situation. So you just happen to have a lore uh, that's all about the Feywild and about Feywild portals and stuff. Let's just say that. It's your one-time use of that object, and you're committing it. It's very generous of you. So that definitely gives you a plus on that. The fact that your research of the elves were running from a creature, they're a ladron, they belong in the Feywild, they're running away from a creature, so they ran in through this, this, this portal, definitely relevant here. That you know all about creatures in the Feywild, creatures including fey creatures. That's going to be, well, it's going to be relevant if the thing that's chasing them was a fey creature. So it might be worth one, it might not. So I'm going okay. to hold in my hand, and I'll reveal later on whether that's true. Uh, you're, uh, you're talking to Dak Dak, uh, that, that's the reason you use Insight, so it does not plus, but allows you to use Insight, which is a very strong skill, so that's a good choice. So Dak Dak is definitely worth li um, uh, listening to you. Last one is the combination of Buffy speaking Elven, Sid knowing about Elves with all that stuff. So you know, you, you're helping, as you come in, you're, you're helping translate some of the stuff uh, in the book, like there's probably terms and stuff that, like your version of, El I know you speak Elven yeah. as well, but you know, there's different branches of yeah. Elven, so it takes both of you knowing different branches and dialects of Elven. This book has got a lot of different passages, and you don't know all the dialects super well. There's some things that you know, some parts of dialects. You put your heads together on how to read this uh, this book properly, so that gives a third. Mm -hmm. Here's a couple things that are true but not relevant. Also, go into lightly if you roll really well, I might expand on them. But the Eladrin, they shift based on the seasons, is true. It won't be relevant to this in particular, but there might be, it's still a useful fact with sun mysteries, but in this case, the season thing might not uh, be, be in effect here. Stone cunning, unfortunately, yeah. uh, doesn't it doesn't affect it. It would, but uh, you know that uh, I'll explain why. But stone cunning d doesn't happen to help you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to reveal about uh, about the, the creatures. It is not the case that the creature is chasing them, though they were in the Feywild. These mm -hmm. creatures do not belong to the Feywild. So mm -hmm. as you think about, it's like I've gone through all of the creatures that could possibly be of danger in the Feywild, and I've looked at those marks like nothing matches, and that's even weirder. Like, something that's alien to the Feywild was in the Feywild that chased these things here. So even though you don't get an extra point, that's an interesting bit of no, information. So we might do say, oh, that means my next investigation is going to take that into account. I'm going to like think, I'm going to use other skills and other things that, that think of things that don't belong in the Feywild. What could they possibly be? So you got a plus three. So Hilda, you now roll uh, Insight, because you're talking to Dak Dak, 
and you get a plus three on top of everything else. Okay. And you'll see I'm doing the same thing. Every time I put beads on the table, they're all always with a plus one to it. So just to make sure I get what I want, I want to go up to him. Just yeah. Say, Hi. How you been? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting over it. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, kind of getting back to work. Yeah, machine shop. Oh boy. Yeah. So the mushroom place. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. How did that come to be? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, so like, we just discovered it. You know, like uh, you know that that cave wasn't always there. <laughs> I was like, uh, like the whole cave. Uh, well, no, the the mushrooms didn't always appear. It's like uh, a couple of years ago. You know, I, I don't live here. You know, like I live up, you know, back where we captured you. I live nearby there. Okay. <laughs> you got a very charming smile as you talk. Yeah, it was, that's actually near my home. It's, it's pretty great. It's all snowy. It's cold. I don't like it down here. It's pretty damp. Anyway, uh, you know, I come back here every few years. You know, because we do trade and stuff. You know, like we sell captives like you and stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, that uh, I used to explore the caves. You know, sneak around. And that I was in that cave. It didn't have mushrooms like three years ago. And all of a sudden, bam, mushrooms and that weird mm, feeling. You know that stuff so yeah I'll, like your adventure is like hey do you think that was there, were there any gems there is there anything like you think a, a, like a dragon would like did you see any of that no i didn't sadly oh just, but yeah, just but, herbs, yeah. <laughs> mushrooms so, but based on your insight yeah you, you'll you'll get more out of dak dak as he goes so you're asking dak dak all these things like oh let's maybe go there together so you know like let's tell me what you remember from going there so yeah. depending on how well you roll he'll help you okay. more and more so this is your effect on dak dak okay so plus six good um, that's a 19. Very so good. That's going to be a 25. Oh, nice. yes! Yeah. 25. Well. <laughs> it's the dice. Those dice are yours. Very good. So I'm going to compare that to the DC, right? So I've set what the DC is. You'll figure it out over, over time. But the, 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 ooh, this DC is too hot. Uh, the DC is 15 for this, uh, for this kind of, uh, of mystery. Uh, which is which is good, which means you beat it by ah One. twenty. You beat it by ten, yeah. just enough. See, this is why every point matters. Mm -hmm. Beating it is good. Beating by five is very good. Beating by ten is super good. So, Dak Dak, as he goes through, uh, he's like, hey, well, you know, I have this thing that uh, you know I I never found it all that useful, but you know, I got a feeling like you're an adventurer. Like maybe you know, if this thing about the Feywild is true, like maybe you can go into the Feywild and like maybe there's treasure. You know, you can bring the dragon. Like that would be great. So you know. I'm gonna give you something if if you promise me that maybe you'll use it yeah, you know, to bring something back and you know you don't give it to me. They might give yeah. it to the dragon. Do we have a deal? Definitely try. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. Without committing, like, okay, your insight was enough. They knew just how to phrase that without actually being committed. <laughs> you just got very excited. So he uh, he gives you uh, a bronze compass, Ooh. but put it call it bronze fey compass. Oh, and you know from reading the elven lore, oh. the weird thing about the Feywild is a crazy geography. Like, mm -hmm. it's like Alice in Wonderland. Like, sometimes to go north, you actually have to go south. Or sometimes to go from one place, you have to go around a tree three times. Oh. Or you have to, like, bathe in the water under the moonlight. And when you get out of the water, you're di a different place. Like, all of your movement through the Feywild makes no sense. One of the things, just like, you go east, and then you go west, and you're not back where you started from. The Fey Compass helps solve certain navigational problems. What does it look like? It just it looks like a bronze compass. Okay. It's made of bronze, it and it's got a needle. Need but be. here, it's like the needle's always spinning around. It doesn't point north. Or anything. It says, oh, don't worry, it works, supposedly, in the Feywild. <laughs> yes, like, I, I found it on just some guy I killed. And, uh, well, that, 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 that you know, well, <laughs> I, I was responsible for it, sort of. It was treasure. <laughs> uh, and, but, you know, the dragon probably isn't all that interested in it. So, you know, mm -hmm. here, take it. So you think that it is uh, worth uh, some money I'm if you were to sell it. it. No, no, exactly. But if you were to sell it. I'm trying to convince someone that the compass that just spins around is worth anything if you were to sell it. Um, yeah, yeah, I promise it's from the Fey. I got it from the mini dragon. He it, said it was. I'd <laughs> have to sell it to someone who knows about the Fey Wild. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you think that it's worth, uh, it's worth five gold pieces yeah. if you were to sell it. So for five GP. And if to the right buyer, it might be even more. Mm. So, but. Uh, just write, yeah, you've written down Fake Compass. Yeah. Write down the date as well. So okay. just write, write down, you know, like, like 24th of March, because that way I'll go into my log. What the hell, did, what the hell is this Fake Compass about? <laughs> so I'll, I'll write down more stuff about that. But we're pretty sure that if you're in the Feywild, it will really help you navigate. That's if you go to the Feywild by reading all this stuff. You also know, is my time up? No, it's good. Um, you know that from reading all this stuff in the Feywild books, it's very dangerous to go to the Feywild. Like, you should not be going there when you're level two. Yeah. But, you know, when you're like level three, four, this, yeah, this is when you get to like, uh, there's a big shift between Epic 1 and Epic 2. So Epic 1 is, you, you really want to solve the Goblin Plague, because you know, you got sympathies for these, these, these villagers and things. And you've got, you, you want to shut down the Goblin threat and figure out what's organizing the Goblins and all that stuff. That's kind of Epic 1, that's kind of your main job as adventurers, because you know, it's the reason you got kidnapped. But once that's over, we actually move forward to a second year, through both shards, both the Moon Shard and this shard, get weaved together and a maximum table size of six, based on people who are interested and just fit into a team well, yeah. go forward into Epic 2. So the Sun Party, you can see the videos for on Patreon, the Sun Party is in Epic 2. Mm -hmm. Once you're in Epic 2, you get to choose 
any direction. Like every every epic two is extremely different from each other because after solving the epic one goblin problem, everybody goes in a different direction and discovers entirely new things. Mm -hmm. Your thing could be the Feywild. You could say like we care so much about the Feywild, we want to. The first thing we do once the goblin problem is solved is we're going to go right into the Feywild. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's really useful for the future. I would advise you go diving in right now because you're not quite strong and well yeah. equipped enough. But this is part Let's of it. Keep it on the mind. Yeah, keep it on your mind. And you want to have that nice and trade it when somebody's time. going there. Thank yeah, exactly. Thank him very much. I was like, yeah, well, look, uh, you know, hey, I, I just want to tell you, you know, I don't want to be around the other kobolds. Like, I kind of I, I kind of get it, you know, like, uh, uh, so uh, I just want to tell you, you know, like, thanks for, you know, trying to trust us, you know. I, I know that everybody says kobolds are bad, um, and I know we, we kidnapped you and we tortured some of you. Um, but, you know, it's just a job, you know, like, mm -hmm. The dragon really is cool, but I, I know I know I'm not gonna try to convince you about the dragon. But you know, I just want to say thanks for like, I'm trying to make things different. Like I think kobolds can make money, you know, in different ways. You know, violence is fine, but I'd maybe rather not do it. I guess because it does make me feel bad sometimes. I guess when we kill people, maybe I like to make money without killing people. That'd be all right. You I guess. Try and open up a shop. Do your little steel trade. But do you really think you think it could? I like, think you could. You think I mean, the steel you know, deal works? Cool stuff. That's a pretty smart idea. It's you a got great it. idea. The steel deal is awesome. Yeah. Like I can't believe I invented it. Yeah. You can yeah. just like so, sell like very like you know. Sell. I, I don't know the word sell means. Imagine them. Steel deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, steel deal. Yeah. You know, cobalt stuff. It'd be like. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, it's there's not a lot of cobalt stuff in the town. I'll tell you that much. So oh, there might be all like right. If you travel and want to get a souvenir, maybe some museums would be interested. Oh, in awesome. Okay, well, yeah, I just wanted to say like thank you for like you know, uh, give me a chance. Like I don't know, maybe we can figure out something. You know, so. Balance the <laughs> yeah. I reckon they make really good secondhand car sales. Okay, so that was one round of investigation. Each of you get to do that thing. It could be a mystery that you dig into, or it could change the world. Do a similar kind of role. Say, I want to really affect the world in some way with like some NPC, some people that I've named. So take a break. We'll come back in five minutes. We'll have time to do the other three investigations as we go. Ooh. Ooh, mine is successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that very good. Compass. Getting plus <laughs> 10 is, a magic, is, is, is amazing. That's a great, that's rare to get 10 over. Magic compass. Magic compass. Yeah, we'll definitely need to go to the yeah. well, at some I point in there. time. Yeah. For the campaign I'm considering uh, while Beyond the Witch Light, which is all in the Feywild. Mm. Yeah. I, I think I heard that that one's like not so heavy on the combat side. Yeah, yeah, it's like. Yes, yeah, so this is designed to. This is uh, sorry, to interrupt, but this no, is a yeah. sample of like D and D that's much less combat. So this session imitates. I mean, I love the combat. No, that's it. Like, I yeah. think that's. It's but I think that's more of a. There's flavors of D and D. They're much less about combat, much more about this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. it's all fun though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm getting really attached to Hilda. So like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the fact that like like that's what um um Act Two is gonna be, I feel like I'm gonna have to play this character for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. That, most people stick with their original character. They just get attached and they go all the way through. Yeah. So yeah. We just talked about the secondary character. Like, wait, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's one point <laughs> really where I, there's one point where I actually make you temper temporarily shift to a secondary character at one point. So it is good to have oh, secondary okay. character oh, just just to to sort of play, but only for you know. You can just dabble a little bit, and it, it's it's sort of like getting into a cold pool. You know, once you dip yourself in, it feels it's, much better. As much as I enjoy playing Cedar, it would be kind of more fun to play like a, a lawful character just to give it a try rather than just pure I'm chaos. I play Barbarian one night, just be like a dumb person that just like, hits stuff. I do quite like the wizard with the blast thing, so like I think my yeah. next one will be just a new group. Mm. But before the last time was to I think I think this is the case. Did I do this right? Do you get yet more XP? Yeah, we did a lot of talking. Yeah. Okay, so you get 25 more XP. Yeah. So you'll notice that these little bits of XP, they're, they're non-violent. So you're not risking your life, but you do get little bits of experience. If you're using your character and learning about the world, basically you're getting to know your character, that's what XP is all about. You, you know more about your character's skills than each other's character's skills. You get more XP for fighting, but remember when you're fighting, you have a chance of dying, and when you die, you lose XP. So that's why fighting earns you more XP than just you know, adventuring or, or investigating. Investigating is safer. Let's bring you progress a little bit more steadily. Okay, I'm ready for someone else. Yep, the Whiskey Mysteries, that's all good. Yep, we're good. So, who wants to go next? Uh, I'm as well then. Uh, sure. So, yeah, I want to talk to, is it Thorgrim, the half orc? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just to basically, why she was, like, what it was they were trying to get out of it. Like they mentioned like mm. someone was saying, what's your already built? Like, why were they asking her? How did she come to be there? Yeah. Good, just, okay. Uh, some more background as to what's going on, basically. Yep. All right. So start thinking as I make my notes here, and you can start talking now, but I won't write it down until my timer starts, is what you already know about Thogram 
remember, you can do a hypothesis. I still have to take the time to write it down, but then I think this is true. If it's true, you get an extra point for it. But even if you're wrong, at least you know your hypothesis is wrong. Sometimes you want to chuck out a hypothesis just to, just to rule it out. So think of that and talk amongst yourselves about what you know about fog and look at your notes and stuff while I make notes here. I think I get the character. <laughs> the name is confused. Fulgrim was Fulgrim. a half orc scholar academic. Who was, who was in the and was she's taken and tortured yeah. regarding Were the order by the government. Fulgrim was in the prison cell. So yeah. yeah. She was in the, there oh, in the carriage with us. Oh, in like the carriage. Yeah, she was in the carriage. She was like yeah. from the start. Yep, she's there from the start. Oh. Yep, she, she got on the carriage. I think she was dressed quite well. Oh. She got on the carriage from the city. Oh. So she got on a water. So she, uh, she's not like affiliated with the goblins. No, no, no. No, no, she was a passenger with you. She's, oh, she's not a hero, she a so she wasn't, character. she was like, uh, Miz not appearing Probably in this really film yeah, at yeah, that yeah, point, yeah, but, uh, yeah, 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 but yeah, she was yeah, there the yeah, whole time. She's yeah, quite quiet, yeah. she's very academic, yeah. she's always reading a book, and she, she didn't make comments, she's very, she's, oh, yeah. she kept herself pretty quiet, she didn't really volunteer much information. Okay, so she wasn't the character with us then. Okay, so I'm less interested in, like, where she comes from. I'm more interested now in, like, you know, what it was I was trying to get out of her, and, you know, what she was holding back, if she was holding anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because she seems like she's been playing pretty close. But of course, mm -hmm. you have saved her life. That's definitely yeah. one of the things you'll probably cite. And that will give you at least a point. Um, and other things. So, uh, I was just, just all about to start my time. Like or being a scholar. So that's still your backstory. Isn't it? Yeah, mostly so when you're doing this, mostly you want to do just world facts. So more like as players, what fact do you? Properties of your character can't apply because it's kind of like like you're all doing this at the same time. Yeah. So you're all splitting up. So Sid's kind of doing this on his own. So it, you can't use your own, your own skills, but you can use your knowledge of the world to, to give Sid ideas. I'm pretty sure half walks aren't super common. Mm. Well, they're kind of big, muscly, tanky times. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, this one she's, is big. she's big. She's big as and she, she was being, being asked about the orange, orange, but yeah. we don't know if that if she actually knows anything about this. But yeah. the fact that you know a little yeah, bit. Even about the, it. Yeah, even the yeah. So when it comes time when I'm about to start the timer, even stuff that's obvious that you're sure that I know you know, you might as well say it anyway because I can't give you a point for unless you actually say it and I write it down. Okay. Yeah. So the fact that she's being questioned about the order is definitely something that uh, you might want to mention. You like that's important was, enough to give a try. Was she tortured in the mm. and she was, so she knows something. She like she knows something. Well, they thought they she thought knew something. They assumed that she's a scholar. Ah. Okay. Mm. I'm starting she the timer. Like, she didn't say anything. Yeah. Now, you first. What do you know? What's, what's one world fact I can write down? Here? Well, I saved her life um, as, you know, sure. and in kind of introduced her patron. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, she's dressed in academic garb. So just one thing at a time. So yeah, yeah. So, so I put yep. that down on one category or the other. Do you want to do another one or do you want to hand the floor to someone else? You guys can flip to you. Look, she, she, so she's half human, half Half mm -hmm. yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Possibly it. Mm. I'm writing that down in one category. Are there many half orcs around? Yeah, half mm. orcs are it's not super common. Kind no. of tribal, I'm outsiders. And I'd, I'd like, would it, be, would it be a bit. It's a race that anyone can like white out. So. Mm. Yeah. It's, like it's a race like human and dragon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was identified as a scholar or an academic and yeah. apparently mm -hmm. that, wearing something quite fine tough. in her clothing. Would that yeah. be, I like orcs, like scholarly in nature? No, not mm. really. I feel like it'd be not typically, it's but like you know, the equivalent of like kind of like the. So you just kind of never like most of the stories are about orcs, or all the well, I'll describe that as part of my answer when uh, when I, I put that academic I mean, thing is down that somewhere. Kind of the question of like mm. they could be is, is you know is that racist to assume that yeah. they're not racist? Yeah, I mean yeah. basically, I mean that that uh, that you know that uh, that that all different heritages can do all kinds of things. Yeah. So, like it's not destiny. Now it's true that most of the stories you've heard about orcs are about orcs being very warlike, but that's just the stories you've heard. And that's a product yeah. of society. It's not necessarily the truth. I'm also, I have one of the torture needles from the goblins. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe don't want to show Whenever that. When I became a peace cleric, I may have dropped that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've written that down in one mm -hmm. category or the other. Anybody else got an idea in the minutes we got? So they took her to um, torture regarding information on the warrior. Yes. Yeah. Which it sounds like was unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. They were not happy with her. I think the only other thing is like sharing the carriage together. Sure, yep. Maybe she said something to one of us. She was going the same place as us. Yeah. Same yeah. Place, same okay. Like, yeah, she wants to help the farmland yeah. too. You can help us help. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, that that might be right. Right. Yeah. Okay, another minute left. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, right. Something in her and the baby. No. No, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did she? Do something. Yeah, what happened baby. to that baby? <laughs> yeah, the giant thing. He went for dinner. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, still, the baby's out there. Um, what 
Tyrese. Yeah. Yeah. Again, she said she didn't know anything when they pres- they can't like presumably show like they can't like what is yes. this? And she said she didn't know. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, not all right. Yeah. Let's stop there. All right. Good. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, you, you you're doing this well. All right. So relevant things, maybe in order of priority, not very much. Um, one thing is that you saved her life via the patron. That's a huge influence on her. So of course you get a plus for that because you know, so she's much more open to talk to you than she ever would be before. You get the sense that she really feels like she's transgressing a promise that she made mm-hmm. by s- telling you anything, okay. but she feels like because she owes you her life, she thinks it's justified to break this promise. You know, it's just like a, this, this is only possible because we saved her life. Okay. So that, that, that's, that both gives you a point, but it basically makes this whole thing possible. Sorry. Uh, that she is an academic is very important. This has to do with her academic nature. Um, and as she explains to you, uh, well, she'll explain more depending on how well you roll, but that, that's relevant. All these things will flesh out more if you roll well enough. Uh, that they tortured her about the orrery unsuccessfully. Uh, she said she didn't know anything. That is very relevant to uh, what she has to say to you next. She, uh, and she held up a good fight if she does know a lot. <laughs> and that she got on the carriage at the same place that you didn't have the same destination. That, in fact, is very much uh, part of the answer of what, what she's doing there and, and, and what you would like to discover from her. Some things that are they're true but not relevant uh, is that uh, you can have half humans, half orcs, that they can be tribal. Uh, that's not very common. Those are all true. And it's true that a lot of this, those stories, like I said, are, are in mm-hmm. one way. But it just it, it doesn't have to do too much with, uh, with her, her answers. Uh, the fact they have a torture needle, uh, you've decided not to show that to her. You think they're traumatized. Yeah, so <laughs> something that's true <laughs> that would have an effect. <laughs> it's not true that you probably want to use that if you intuited that. Uh, the giant baby is interesting, but she was shit scared during the giant baby thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's just she's just another normie. Uh, so yeah, there's several people in the, in the carriages who are just normal people. Several of them got killed in the ambush. Some of them got taken prisoner and left in the cells. She was one of them, so she wasn't doing anything useful during that. She was just uh, she was scared while you acted. That's all it. So you are going to use what skill, Sid? Uh, basically, uh, well, being a warlock, I'm very high in charisma. So okay. I'm good at pe- which is why I'm talking to someone mm-hmm. rather than like sure. into You don't have to make excuses. Yeah. You got charisma. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, so like not like, like persuasion, uh, basically. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Five, that's yeah. fine. Persuasion. Yeah. Cool. Right. Don't really want right. to intimidate. Persuasion is better. Okay. So yeah. You're basically trying to get past her reticence, and this is a yeah. good way to hopefully find out, well, why are you so reluctant to tell me? You're kind of mm-hmm. gently coaxing it out of her. So roll persuasion with a plus four on top of everything else, because you get a good set of relevant facts. Yep. Okay, it's got to be okay. That's 18. Woo! Plus five, plus four. Damn, that's pretty high. 27. 27? Wow! Okay. Is that right? Yeah, 27. Yes, nine and 18. Yeah. Holy Shit. cow! Yes! Well, again, as you know, the DC was 15, so you have beaten it by more than 10, so... Very persuasive. Yes, exactly. (laughs) You're now married. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get jump jump. I wouldn't mind it. She can join a lot of Okay. Uh, remind me about, uh, there's there's a, there's basically a monetary reward that you get, but I want to get right into the story. Okay. Very interesting. As you talk to her, the secret that she says. I don't know what she sounds like. Let me look up, uh, look up her, I've got her voice profile here. So I don't know what her voice is like. Was she last time she was just screaming. So she hasn't yeah, talked very much. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's all I have. Where is that? Where is that? I like this. I like to. Because she's going to be an important character. Let's do mm. this properly. What's her name again? Sorry. Thogrim. 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 T H O Thogrim. T H O G R I M. Happy writing is A U. That's good. Thanks for the correct spelling. <laughs> yeah, so she's, she's got this very low, sort of deliberate voice as she talks, you know, sort of humbly. Uh, she's never really talked very much. Uh, I see that first, I gotta tell you how much uh, I, I gotta say thank you for saving my life. And it's only because of this that I'm gonna tell you some things that I really shouldn't be saying. But I mean, the things that if it got out, that I said them, I would probably be killed. But I figure I almost died anyway. So in a way, it kind of balances out that I tell you these things. But you know, you can tell your friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I know you're all kind of tight that way. But do not tell other people what I'm Mom's telling away. you. Away. Uh, so I was sent here to Timboy Valley on a mission. 
the orrery is in fact mine. And I in fact know all about how to operate this. And when I was being tortured, I came very close to spilling my guts about it. But like I said, I knew that I would suffer even worse if I told the wrong people about that thing. Uh, you know, I'd be praying for death. The kind, of, the kind of person who employed me, I would be praying for death for what she would do to me if, uh, if this got out. So it's very important that you and your friends keep this quiet. I was sent here by a uh, very important mage. Uh, she's from Dimgate, actually, uh, but she portals around. You know, she, was, she sometimes is in Waterdeep, but I know she also has a place in Dimgate, which is you know, here, here on the continent of Dimgate, to the south. Uh, Dimgate's a big city far to the south. Waterdeep is where to start <coughs> off. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you her name. She calls herself Miriam. And I don't know what she looks like because she wears a silver mask. It's kind of creepy. It makes her voice so strong. It's like a shiny silver mask. She is a powerful mage, and she knows everybody. She's very connected. She goes to these parties, like elites, all the all the rich fucks, you know, out in out in Waterdeep and Dimgate. There's a big party where people like uh, people like you that ripen these shards, you know, the things glowing around the neck. There's always somebody like like you at that party. They're watching the music. They're watching the dancing. They're watching the sex. They're doing whatever else, and they're making the shard glow, right? That's these, these parties that happen. Miriam's always at these parties. She sent me on this mission, and the orrery was an important part of it. I can't believe I'm telling you, but again, I gotta tell you, this orrery, if you op if I need to come here to take readings, like star readings and elevation readings, if you operate it correctly, and I know, you, I know one of your friends over there, like uh, you, know, you told me that your friend there knows how to operate it, right? Um, if you use it correctly, you can figure out what happened hundreds of years ago. Like this is uh, the year, about around the year 200, we figure. I, I can figure out the exact year if I use the orrery here. About the year 200 right now, it's like the year, I think it's the year 598 right now. So in the year 200, you know, hundreds of years ago, a meteor came down and struck this land. It came up from the east at a high angle. So you, she points up at an angle, like, you know, like a 27 degree angle, like uh, up, up to the east. It came straight from the east and it plunged downward. As it did, it carved out that big canyon that, you, that all the caves of chaos are in. It ripped open and crushed down that ground. It made the land all weird. This I call, we call the chaos meteor. All those chaos shards that you have around your neck, this was made out of those things. Big ones and small ones, like a big cluster of chaos, metal chaos shards. And it came from space. It came from way out there. The orrery can recreate its path, right? If I can figure out exactly where it landed and exactly what the elevation is, I can basically kind of retroactively do the math to figure out its exact angle and timing. We just know kind of generally when it fell, and generally the angle, but we need to be exact. And here's the reason why. This is why Miriam wants to know the reason why. If we can figure out exactly when and where that meteor fell and exactly how, as it hit the meteor, at some point it exploded. Like, like the heat or something as it entered the atmosphere. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a scientist. I can explain it to you later. But things can blow up when this happens, right? It shot all of the chaos metals into the ground. It flew them up in the air. It threw them sideways. And it fired them down. And they plunged into the <laughs> earth. It was spinning, I think, at the time. If I could figure out the rotation. So these shards that they want to mine, the things they want to dig out of the ground, these shards, of which I know are very powerful, I'm not going to judge, but I think, I, th I think they're a bad idea, but look, uh, I'm just doing things for Miriam. I'm not, I, I can't tell you, I, she's just got leverage on me, is what i got to say. I'm doing this for Miriam because she wants to know all this information so she can figure out where to dig a new mine, a new shard mine. Right now, the shards are being mined in a place, I think, nearby, right? Uh, I know the kobolds and the gnolls are all involved. You can figure that out. But I don't think it's the biggest mine that you can dig. And it's been, been dug out for years. It's got to be getting sort of tapped out. There's, there's got to be places in Timberway Valley that when the, when the meteor exploded, put a lot of shards underground. Mm -hmm. And if you dig a mine, if we know where to dig, if Miriam figured out where to dig, she can have more chaos shards than anybody's ever seen, and the world be full of them. And that's just what she wants, and very important to her. Use the Ori, figure out how it works. Don't let anybody know your results. Be very careful who knows this information. A lot of people want chaos shards. I don't think a lot of them want it for the right reasons. So, you know, but if you, 
I don't, you don't destroy the orrery. It's very precious to me, first of all. Oh, by the way, uh, inside the orrery, uh, there's there's some gems inside the orrery that I kept in there. So if, if the, she describes like a couple of levers and things, so later on, you, you surreptitiously sort of use the orrery to see what she means, and you get uh, a, a nice topaz that's worth five gold pieces. So you now have a, a, a topaz. So yeah, it's not necessary. This is just it's a it's a replacement lens that I replaced a long time ago. So you can take that. You know, so consider that yours for saving my life. And now we're clear. Right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you use that ori, if your friend can use that ori, you know, it takes a lot of intelligence and you want to you take readings around the land and figure out where that shard mine information is. I don't want to go do with the information, you know. Uh, but yeah. Miriam wants to know. The Knowles would want to know. Ziggy, the one who's in charge of all this thing, we mentioned, you mentioned this Ziggy person. I guess, I guess they're, he's, he's in charge, they're in charge, whatever. They would want to know. Everybody wants to know where to dig a shard mine. Mm. Keep it to yourself if you want to control it. That's what the information was. Oh. That's a lot of information. <laughs> That's right a lot now. of information. Yeah. Very good. Is Thorbrand wearing red? Uh, no. No, She's kind of purple. She's not part of the red cult. She's okay. more likely to be wearing silver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like these, like, cobalts aren't working. Yeah, you can investigate further. You know, this I is mean, focused mostly on, yeah, like, so why are you here? It's like these yeah. two Parties are trying to get the as far as you can tell, she's just picked randomly. Like the the, yeah. the, the kobolds intended to torture everyone until somebody, because yeah. certainly somebody owned the ori. This happened to basically get her first, but she resisted. Also, we were captured by one group of kobolds, and then we were passing to another group, and so maybe yeah. there's I things think it's some track, track this or whatever her name is, cuckoo lady that lives mm. in the. Yeah, the person that we just almost drop 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 versus Miriam. I feel like yeah. that's where it is mm. in the house. Okay, yeah. very good. All right, we got time for for both uh, the next two. So who's the next one? Oh uh, yeah, I want to find out more about the chaos shards. Yeah, that's really useful. Now so, this is very appropriate. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what's know. what's the most specific question you want to answer? Because there's so many things to say. Is there is there a question that can help crystallize it around? Um, what's the what's the uh, question? The thorough answer to which will satisfy. Are they set like are they safe for us? To Great. Use? Yeah. And yeah, if not, why not? So that'll be too much of things. Okay, that's a good question. All right. Start again. And we don't have time to do a lot of brainstorming. You have to all start the timer. Okay. So, uh, you first. Uh, Amy, what, uh, what do you know about uh, Chaos Shards? They facts? can like, make people high. Or yes. Like, yeah, okay, make people that down high. And if yeah. you get too high, your eyes get burnt out. Yep, great. Into eyes. I'm writing that down in one category or the other. Create demonic portals. Yes. <laughs> Tied to emotion. And ripened by storm. Possibly have some Feywild connection given that it's ripened in the Feywild yeah. room. But that could be something else that's challenging it. It's a good suspicion. So put down the ripened with emotion part what was the other thing you said? Um, it could Feywild. possibly be connected to the Feywild given that, that it gets like, yep. charged in that room. Yeah, okay, great. Either the Feywild or the mushrooms, whatever. Yeah. Very good. And now we know they come from the meteor. So yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, and they, when we fitted through... Mm -hmm. yeah, Minted, wait a second. Sorry, yeah. People want so. them. That's just a general thing we know. Yeah, everyone's fucking obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, everyone's well, saying we they're powerful. Well, we call the chaos yeah. party, so I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to the story, and just metagaming. Yeah, Nor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I've written that down about meteor. Um, Who's got another um, thing? Wait, you know. Is it like, um... Like it's like a connected to like time and space, like it's kind of like quantum or something. Oh, okay, so that'd be, that'd be a hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah is it yeah. like some kind of like sh yeah, like uh, different worlds and yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. I was about to say about reality shifting, like yeah. we first it's it's when we went through to Jock Jock's place, we couldn't fit through the keyhole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's distorted. Yeah. yeah, distorted space. Okay, and it seems like. Radiate chaos energy, which you call it, and so like very mm -hmm. kind of psychic manipulating or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heads. She wanted to use them to charge something, so it's kind of like a source of power. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's a okay. power source. Yep. I'll see. Yep, 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 Fried yep. the hands as well. I did fry someone's mm -hmm. hands. Yeah, Jock Jock's hands were all like oh, no. scorched. Oh, How is she still alive? Um, you guys did I I hit her with a twelve point heal. Mm. You guys did magic. Yeah. Because, uh, spring back I really wanted like a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any last thing, Amy, that you want to put on the list before I move um, on? Um, well, they're, yeah, they're being mined by goblins. Yeah. Yeah. 
and right. yeah, yeah. They might no. The gnolls are uh, mining. Gnolls. Oh, the gnolls are mining. The, the goblins are like from the like the from the goblins. There's the like a big, there's a big like a uh, supply, supply chain. chain. Thing <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> okay, good. We'll yeah. stop there. Yeah. 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 Uh, Amy, what is, or sorry, um, uh, Buffy, what is the uh, skill that you're going to use? Uh, oh. oh, no, no, wait, uh, sorry, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me reveal what's relevant. Okay. Use your longbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're good at something, I'm always going to try to be as creative as possible, you know? It's like, because if there's a way we could possibly justify it, it would. That's, that's a stretch, but we'll right. see. Mm. All right. So, one of the most important things is that they radiate chaos energy. This is, so you're determining. What is the safety factor? What's the OSHA? What's the what's the regulation like? What if, if in, an, in an academic study, you know, what are the known risks of dealing with chaos shards? Uh, both benefits and risks. I'll do both at both ends of the scale. Uh, one is that the chaos energy is very important. Uh, the fact that uh, that they, they make people get very high and insane that by blasting in their eyes, that's certainly relevant to what's dangerous or not or nice about them. Uh, the fact they create portals through which demons are coming, that's another point. So they open up a portal in space. If you roll very well, I'll, I'll illustrate more of these very uh, more. The fact that they came from a meteor, you have to roll very high to know why. So at least you know that the fact that it came from this that meteor that came from space is part of what, what relates to them being dangerous, but not in an obvious way. If you want to figure out why, not obviously you have to roll very well. And interestingly, that there's a quantum aspect, the space warping, a sort of quantum aspect, the quantum reality aspect of this thing is actually really relevant. Again, it's one of those things that will take some real digging to sort of you know, attach it to something. Now, these things, you did very well. So these things, I'm not saying that they're not relevant at all. It's just that they're less relevant than the things that were listed. So they have only mild relevance. The fact that they're ripened with emotion is true. Uh, so these things are all true. It's true they're ripened with emotion. That doesn't make them inherently dangerous or inherently good. It really depends on, I'll, I'll, expand, I'll expand why. But there's nothing inherently good or bad about the fact that emotion is involved. The fact they're a power source. Again, power can be used for both good and bad things. It's not inherently bad just because of the power source. Or like you think, like nuclear power can be used for, for multiple purposes. The fact that it fries your hands, that's really a product more of the portals, because the, 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 the hands seem, seem to happen only when you're sticking your fingers and making that portal. So if you learn more about the portal, you learn more about the effect on the hands. So we're not going to give you a point for that. It's kind of the same thing. And the fact that being mined by the gnolls, that's very true. It's not relevant how dangerous they are, but still good to keep in mind. What's not true is that they are connected to the Feywild. Um, some things are maybe that's 99% that's not true, and I can't expand beyond that again without a very high roll, Did but it's basically drugs? not true. I think it was just that it was a good <laughs> Okay. Just um, atmosphere. So, as you can see, and the maximum the maximum amount of points you can get is five, by the way. So, so okay. you can totally max that. So, after that, I'll, I'll, you know, so I sort the most, the most important five things. So, good so job. Will I just use my wisdom because that just seems the most relevant? I yeah, so really skill. Know. So, you can use, definitely use a skill based on wisdom. So, you take a look at your skills. Oh, now, but keep in mind so that. My skills. Yeah, my usually your skills. Yeah. History. history. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, so I'll use history. That's great, yeah. So, yeah. and the one that you choose, especially if your role isn't Sorry. great, it'll give you different mm -hmm. kinds of information. So, like survival versus history, right? If your role's sort of a not That's so great on survival, survival, it'll be much more about, about the safety aspects. But mm -hmm. if your role not so well on history, it'll be much more about when have they appeared in history. And they're both different kinds of information. Mm -hmm. So, which kind of information is the one you're after? I focus. guess, yeah. Well, my, my main question was like, how can we? So I guess I'll use survival. Great, sure. I think it's very relevant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're really about the dangers and benefits, that's what survival's yeah, yeah, all about. Yeah, yeah. What's okay. the dangers and benefits oh of a resource? God, please roll. So yeah. Very good. No! That's average. That's fine. So nine that's fine. plus five is fourteen plus, plus three. Plus, plus, plus three. Yeah, yeah. Plus three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and did you already add the oh. five? So what's oh. the total? Yeah, I was, oh, okay. I was, I was, plus that plus five. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Seventeen. Just beats. We all agree. It's all good. Yeah, check each other's math. There's, there's mm. no no shame, and the math, the math can get very overwhelming. Seventeen. Okay, that is high enough to succeed. Good job. All right, that gets over the threshold. Because if you roll too low, you know, not only do you not find out much, but you, bad things can happen during your investigation. Nobody's gotten that low, so you did quite very well. Here we go. Okay, so in the time that I've got going, yeah, I've got some time, time to tell some great stuff. stuff. And most will be inspired by the relevant facts. Okay, so radiates chaos energy. You know that this thing, for some reason, opens uh, opens a portal to a plane. So the planes, like the Feywild, is a plane. 
it's an alternate existence that you're in. Mm -hmm. A lot of planes sort of overlap, like the Feywild and Material Plane, they sort of overlap. You know, there's like a version of our world that's Fey, and there's a version of the world, of our world that's Shadow, like the, like the Upside Down and, and Stranger Things. The plane this taps into is somewhere else, like there are these outer planes they're called. And outer planes tend to be very, they tend to have one strong theme, right? So for example, one of those pop ones, you know there's a plane of fire, and a plane of water, mm -hmm. and a plane of air. These are what alchemists talk about. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the kind of thing that you already know about through survival. Like you know from your survival, Buffy, that if you're planning on going to the plane of fire, you're going to be constantly taking low level fire damage. So you need fire resistance potions, and you need to have lots of water, and you need to worry mm -hmm. about the fire creatures, okay. creatures that live through fire. Same thing with water and air. So you're familiar with the idea of planes. Your, your role was good, but not mm -hmm. so high that you know what planes taps into, but obviously a plane that's all about chaos itself. So these portals are tapping into an alternate outer plane that is dedicated to the idea of chaos. There's probably a plane, therefore, that's tapped in the idea of order, and the idea of good, and the idea of evil. So it's tapped in the concept of chaos. So these holes that are being opened are pure chaos. And this is why Thogram is called the chaos meteor, because they have chaos energy. But we realize like, that's not a casual term. It's because there's a plane of chaos that these things connect to. So that's one important thing, which makes them <coughs> Yes, inherently dangerous, but chaos is not inherently evil. But chaos, it randomizes, it does surprising things, but chaos allows you to transform things. One thing can be transformed into the other if it's very, it's like, think of creativity. Manic creativity is kind of chaotic. So chaos is not inherently good or bad, but it can be very dangerous. As you saw when fire and acid got poured out of these holes in reality, you know, obviously it can be dangerous. But she created the emotion of, uh, of responsibility, you know, which, which is not a bad emotion at all. So all of these things are accessed from this plane of chaos. It gets injected into people's eyes. You know, survival-wise, this is probably very bad for them. You think it's addictive, so you think that it, it makes you very confused about the nature of reality, and you start to doubt the nature of reality, and that can kind of drive you crazy after a while. You start losing track of what's really real, and what's in your imagination, and what could be real. All these things kind of start getting mixed up in your mind. But it's very liberating to believe that nothing is real. So you know, it's, that's addictive. It's addictive the same way that heroin's addictive. It makes you feel fantastic, and then when it goes away, you want to take more of it because you'd rather be in happy land than the real world, which can really suck sometimes. So that's why it's so addictive. That's the high nature. And somehow about blasting, you're not sure about why it goes into the eyeballs and all that stuff because you're more about survival in this case. These portals of chaos, well, you know, demons are chaotic. They, they are evil and chaotic, so it makes sense that these, these holes that open up to a world of chaos is a place where demons are probably hanging out already. So this explains why the demons come through it. If you open up holes to a chaotic plane, you're gonna have chaotic creatures of all kinds. In that plane, demons are mm -hmm. themselves chaotic creatures. But there's probably other chaotic creatures that come through that the demons are just very good at getting into. The, ma demons love the material plane. That's extremely dangerous. You know demons are undeniably evil and undeniably dangerous. You never have to worry about destroying demons or stopping them. It didn't, so uh, what I'm not touching on is that it came from the meteor. So all this stuff, it does have something to do with the fact that it came from space, but it would take a very high roll to know more about that, so we're not going to go into that. And that there's this, quant this quantum aspect of warping space. I mean, it's true. I mean, if, if you're thinking very creatively, like, space maybe is just a concept, man. Like, maybe space is just all, like, in somebody's mind, you know? So there's that aspect. But also something to the fact that it came from space, and space is weird, and space is extremely large distances and forces you don't understand. Uh, okay, so it can be a power source. Uh, so this chaos, uh, this chaos place, like power can come. You can say, I want electricity, and you can get electricity out of a chaos plane. So yeah, it can be a, a chaos source. You can basically charge a battery with it. You know, you can stick wires in there and say, give me electricity, please, and it can be a power source. That power can be used for for danger. It can electrocute you, or it could power a machine. Uh, emotion is something else, just like anything else. So. Yeah, the fact that it's conducive to emotion, you're not sure. That's more like an insight or religion thing that maybe you could dig into more. Like, why the little shards like emotion so much, you're really not sure. But maybe it's related to chaos. chaos but it's not dangerous. It depends on the emotion. Good emotions might be good for you. Bad emotions might be bad for you. So if you inject into your brain, you know, love and beauty, this thing that Thogram was talking about, yeah, these potties, they wear these things, they, they, they like to, they watch, they, watch, they watch dancing and eating and fucking and all these things, and they glow these beautiful colors, and that's what the rich people want them. You get the idea, it's like, oh, okay, so if this thing's full of good emotion, you plug it into your brain, oh, you get lots of that good emotion. But what if it's ripened with hate or fear or you know, psycho, you know, psychotic violence? So 
It can be used either way. I already mentioned the portal, so yeah, the reason that burns your hands is because, you know, just there's random shit in these planes, uh, these this chaotic plane, so you just kind of get a lucky dip when you open it up, and it's going to be bad for your fingers. <laughs> um, so, I think the bottom line is they are they are source for, they, they can be used as a source for good or for bad, but the only thing that they seem to be able to do is tap into the plane of chaos, and you don't know of any safe way to tap into the plane of chaos without things like demons coming through. So you have to conclude, like, if you were to give a sort of a OSHA certification, it's like, these are not safe to use. <laughs> um, maybe the benefit justifies the risk, but you've got to learn how to deal with the risk. The demons are the biggest risk, and just random elements spewing out of it. Like, if you don't control it with your mind, who knows what kind of weird elements are going to spew out there. So very powerful and probably dangerous because it's very hard to contain it being chaotic. Uh, which might make include like these are probably chaos shards are probably best kept out of anybody's hands like it might they might not be useful but maybe someone who's very good or very powerful could use them for a better cause so you want to keep an eye out for that because surely there's people out there who would love to tell you why they should get the chaos stars and do good things just you want to take it with a grain of salt good satisfied yeah that's all yeah, right that's cool. all right it's last one story, right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, just try and use it at this point. Yeah, also, also well, we've figured out what it's for now. And also, we're in a cave and it's for tracking stars and stuff. So it's for yeah. tracking the media. You yeah. should just do it. Like, we should just find out what happened with this media, keep it to ourselves, and then see where that takes us. I Maybe we're not surrounded by kobolds. I don't know, do they yeah. like remember things? I mean, I was, he like melted my heart, but I still yeah. think they're like, pretty stupid. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. All right, we have time for the last one. Um, yeah, let's let's try using the Ori to um, work out the the trajectory and the path. Okay, get into it. Doing it in a little corner of the the media. Maybe see where it came from. Though. Now, because you rolled a natural twenty, you have a special talent for this. So probably your roll is going to have advantage. So you have a good chance for success. This is your chance to say like, where are you? Before we start stacking this on, give me more context as you do this. Tell me. You know, most things it doesn't matter where or you're in the cave when you discovered this you know your thing discovered where Thogram was your thing basically you could you could have done your thing anywhere because you're looking at shards and gathering the information you knew you also want to know where are you playing with the orrery under what conditions um, well I assume that this needs to be compared to constellations so sure we're gonna need to take it outside I okay. believe somewhere high yep clear yep without any artificial lighting okay great and I'm might be helpful also for adding things. So, can we drag Thorgrim Yes. Yeah. Well, so I mean, yeah, you have a choice. Come with this. That's that's great. So first of all, I mean, Dak has to vouch really. Kobold's like, Kobold's like, wait, don't let him take the order. You know, this is important stuff. You know, like like, like Ziggy wants it. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll just smile. <laughs> yeah, and Dak is like, well, you know, I, I really should come along. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm I, I can convince them to let it go, but they need to have like a representative. You know, just make sure you don't you know. Do a steal deal. And that's fine, but when they call you back, that's fine. So, do you agree? Okay. Yeah. I can take back that quest. Dak Dak can come. I'll just like be next to him the whole time. It's your decision. Does Dak Dak come? He can come, but I'm not revealing anything that we find while he's there. Yeah. Okay, so how are we going to stop? We can keep him just at a distance, maybe? Well, he can't read it, so I'm just not going to tell him. He can just do science y stuff and it's like, oh, well, what a petty to go and get anything. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, all right. But it's like, oh yeah, but you know, maybe I could help. Like, maybe if you tell me everything that you discover with it, but mm -hmm. he's pretty transparent that he just wants to get as much information as possible. Like, no, Dak, Dak, you stay. Yep, he's you know, getting nothing. You keep your eye on the order to make sure I'm not stealing it, but no, you don't. You like, this is a little private thing that we're doing. Yeah. So you hang out with him. Okay. Yeah, right. distract him. So he yeah. swears. <laughs> he him. swears that he give you a plus to your roll if you could just let him help. But you've decided not to. We'll discuss it. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to we'll bring Thogram along? Um. Well, I feel like Thorgrim already knows how to use it, so if we don't bring her along anyway, she could always just use it after the fact. Yeah. Although I guess maybe the cobalt's cobalt not better. I feel like yeah. she might tell, like, this Miriam person. Yeah, let's she leave Thorgrim like behind. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can basically just not tell Thorgrim, like, okay, yeah, Thorgrim, like stay like here and recuperate. And yeah. Like, yeah. We've left Thorgrim, <laughs> <Thogram>. she doesn't, <laughs> even, know doesn't even know we're going to it. She doesn't even know where this place is. It's still, like, a maze to her. So yeah. Didn't she sit back in the cell anyway? So. Yeah. It's your decision. Do you decide? And you, you could all you could all urge him not to. And so you're kicked out of the group if you take Thogram or don't take Thogram. Because Thogram didn't that, give us decision. any information about. It's like she hasn't completed any readings here yet. I assume she'd definitely be helpful. But the, the, like it's almost certainly that uh, you almost certainly get a get a bonus for it. But you're already rolling with advantage, and you know you seem to have a, you have heroic talent that she doesn't have. 
she she would definitely help, but at what cost? She would now she would in order to help, she would need to know everything that you discovered. Yeah, she, I can't, can't conceal help the, the readings from her, so I, I think should we leave her? Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. And I can I've exposition dumped all I've exposition dumped all the stuff I got from Tolver on the group. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't be a person. Yeah. Okay. All right. See us. All right. Doctor can come, but he's kept out of it. Yeah. Yep. Thorgrim uh, doesn't even know we're going there. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So really, don't tell her. Okay. When she did say like, you can. She kind of gave us her blessing to use it anyway. Mm. I don't think she's gonna go back to Marion, but like it's like too risky. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of thinking you were like, I don't even know if it's a good idea to tell the rest of the party. Yeah, it's very much a question of trust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you you heard that she's she's very grateful, but also she talked a lot about how how much leverage Miriam has. So yeah, I definitely think that's true. As usual, I've committed to the answer internally, but I'm not going to give any more clues than I already have about what's really going on. She's out of the loop. Okay. All right. Uh, you all do this oh, together, chapter. probably, because no, you're it's outside, it's always, it's always safe, safe, so you can imagine you're like, all here as this happens. Is it safer to have you guys know the answers as well, or should we keep that from you? Um, I mean, <laughs> no, no, know everybody knows mean. everything, yeah, so, okay. so as it is, you have this, like I've said before, you, captured. you have this weird ability, you all sort of know what the other ones know, it's very right. hard for you to, to have secrets from each other, it's like, ever since maybe the yeah, mushrooms or the mushroom. caves or whatever, <laughs> the lines are sort of linked. It's more as a protective thing than a concealing thing. I know you do. But it's like a workplace team bonding over yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> We've done mushrooms, now we're gonna go play with the Ori. Okay, so uh, let's start the timer and yeah, we'll start talking, talking facts. Mushrooms. All right, so starting with you, Simon slash uh, Karak. What are world facts that are relevant? Um, well, we know that the Ori is a set of brass orbs and, and rings that determine celestial positions. Yep, sure. Specifically, we're relevant to using it with the Chaos Meteor that came down 200 years ago. Okay, great. Those are two things, yeah. So, so, uh, it was possibly created and is owned by a mage. Okay, yes. Well, yeah. So, so it belongs to Thor, yeah. but it may have come from. Miriam. Well, no, it probably belongs to Miriam. And, we know and she might have made it, because she's a powerful mage. Okay. Very good. I've written that down in one of the categories. Yeah, theory. We know the yes. Very good. Yes, I thought so. You'll find out for sure yeah. what's true or not. The meteor landed what? around about the year 200, which is... Good. I think 200. Yeah. And we're now year 500 and... Yeah. 598. Yeah. 598. It's the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 90s again. Okay. So can you use it to, like, find out any, like, facts about the past? Or, like... Uh, celestial facts. So it models. Okay. So it's, 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 like it has many hoops, and yeah, you, now yeah. you look at one of the hoops. Does have this weird sort of star shape? They figure that Thogram told is like, oh, that's that's the meteor, but it has hoops for other planets and other stars and okay. things like, or like not other stars, because those would be very far away. But it has yeah, like a yeah, central yeah. star. Yeah. And it has multiple planets, and you figure, oh, what well, is our planet? Yeah. And there's these other planets. So yeah, you can tell other things. That there's probably astrological truths and things yeah, that might be yeah. useful. So I'll, I'll write that down in one of the categories. Let me give me a moment. Stone? <laughs> Is it made of stone? <laughs> it's brass. Well, it's interesting. Uh, can you think of a way that stone would be relevant based on what you've the, the little pillar that's holding well, it. The planets the themselves gems. could be made of different the, stones. The gems the inside gems, yes. used as lenses and stuff. The topaz used as lenses. Oh. Yeah. Is it Although the topaz yeah, 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 right. well, was a spare lens. Yeah. So uh, that would stand a reason the lens that's in yeah. glory would I also mean, be topaz. The only thing yeah. I can think of is if they use stone to maybe decorate it as like a material. Then it would, could give me an idea of where this was made. There could also be a magnetic element. Where this element. is located from, well, this no. origin. Okay. Yeah, Miriam so the timer's came, still going, I'm writing down as much as I can. The Mir Miriam, who we assume made it, had something to do with production, it came from uh, Dimgate. Mm -hmm. uh, although it spent a lot of time mm -hmm. in other cities through portals, um, mm -hmm. like uh, Waterdeep. Right, sure. Just adding my proficiencies with like armor, shields, and weapons, maybe I just can understand like the material. Okay, sure, sure. And where they came from. Yeah. Oh, this is. Oh, and. It comes from Dimgate. No. I'll add something from my backstory as well. Uh, I've got um, a background as a charlatan, working my way into high society. I'm assuming I probably would have run into one of these parties in looking for information <laughs> uh, to sell for money. Did you watch? This is my standard con. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Did okay. you watch? 
What? <laughs> so what you're doing is you, so you, yeah, that's another thing that comes into focus. So you, so you, yeah. you want to commit to that yeah. as, as now permanently part of back. So you've been to these parties, I've, eh, and <laughs> I've got uh, my false <laughs> identity. As, yeah. uh, was probably one of the you know insinuated himself into these circles. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, that, that, that identity. You clarify that identity. Make yep. sure you commit to that because you know, your identity is going to be yep. focused on sort of one and one area of use. If you're going to, yep. that's great. That's really His fun. His name is Sir Watkin Bassett. <laughs> 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 My backstory yeah, also a famous had partier as it didn't get. Yes. <laughs> yes. My backstory also had that we were using a Ori in the Temple of Ogma, which is the God of Knowledge. Ah. Uh, and we also knew that the Kobolds called it by another name, which involved a lot of X's and S's. Okay. Okay. So let me write these two things down. Made my character an attendee at orgies. Just <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this <laughs> research. Extra point. <laughs> Adding to my background, I believe that she's. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Oh, yeah, trying no to figure out to write this thing about the uh, the XNS mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go. Okay. I'd say that she's probably read a lot of like world religion books and maybe read a bit about the planes, which is why she knows about the Feywild. So if she has any idea about the chaos plane or any sort of like religious cool. element that could be added to this. Okay, because like you're, you're, you're proficient in coming religion. Along, maybe yeah. like she's heard like there's one religion that like really that's meteors and everything, or like there's a prophecy, yeah. something like that, or something okay. with the planes where there's like talks about things. Okay, from sure, the sky. sure. And then the information that we got from. So kind of like history, from. religion. Yeah, just there's the last thing. So so whoever sort of talks next is the last. You, but you're the lead, so you can um, choose who, who does. Thorkum also yourself. revealed that it came from the east at an angle of 27 mm -hmm. degrees. Great, very good. Okay, stop there. Uh, what skill are you going to use as um, you do this? I feel like that would fall under like investigation to be able to use. The yeah, very device. logical, intelligence-based. Yeah, so so you do a lot of trial and error. This is a highly technical machine, involves a lot of math, a lot of yeah, yeah. So that, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. What angle was it? The medium Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. I think I got that right. Okay. So, Carex, investigation. And I will reveal these things. I'm oh, sorry, I should have done this first. Okay, what's relevant? Clerics and wisdom. Wisdom. This is an intelligence. Oh, Strangely intelligence. enough. Oh. And it drops since I changed from wisdom. Right. <laughs> wisdom. Oh, you're a wizard as well with high intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> so it's slightly lower. Well, it drops to point. How do you feel about you abandoning your new god? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, god. Okay, here we go. Strangely enough, one of the most relevant things is that weird word that all, had all the X's and S's. Mm -hmm. It's a language that I don't think any of you would understand this language. Everybody quickly recite all the languages you know. I just common and dwarfish. Yep. Uh, goblin, kobold, draconic, <laughs> elvish, dwarven, and coin. Oh. Such a small list. Yeah. <laughs> common and elvish. No. Common and elvish and celestial. Nope, none of those. Okay, so this is a word in a language that you don't know. Ooh. If you roll particularly high, I will reveal why. So it's relevant, I feel like it's a bit right? But it, but the reason why, th to expand more on the fact that that's relevant, something about it is that as you're doing this, as word goes through your head, it seems to kind of prey in your mind a little bit, like somehow it's making you, it's making you make leaps of intuition perhaps, but you can't go beyond just basic vague intuition, contemplating this word, uh, other than, than that unless you're all very high. The fact that it determines celestial positions for the chaos meteor, I mean, that's obvious, but it's very useful. That's the, so you're using the exact right machine in the exact right place. It's great that you've taken it outside. You can, you can sight stars and planets. You can see them out there. You, you know sort of your general position. It has things that can give you an idea of kind of where you are, you know, with, with the sunrise, you know, your exact latitude and that stuff. Longitude, your longitude, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. It's also got little timers and things, so you, 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 could, you, could, uh, you know there's a lot more to do here. This is your first pass at it. The fact that you know the meteor's general direction and time, thanks to having talked to Thogram, so you know that it was around the year 200, you know that it came from the east, you know that it's now year 598, and it was about that angle, that's very useful. So that basic information, it helps you dial this in, so you, you have a rough approximation of when and where it was, so it helps a lot. The fact that the Ogma Temple had an orrery, that actually at the Temple of Ogma, orreries were actually being used, and the orrery is actually pretty similar to this one. They were tracking planets and stuff. You Maybe if you roll really well, you might learn more. You can't remember particularly that it had a little chaos meteor in, in one of the hoops that you saw at an Ogma uh, Temple. What is not relevant, uh, well not super relevant, is that it was created by Miriam. Uh, I think that is probably as useful for any intelligent mage to do this. 
but it seems to be much more mechanical than magical. So it doesn't seem to be like magic is an important part, it seems to be purely mechanical, very precise mechanical device. There's a lot of math, a lot of intelligence, not so much magic. The fact that uh, you can learn about other planets and positions, that is true, and probably is really useful for other purposes, like if you want to read someone's basically astrological sign, which in this world, astrology is not bullshit. Well, astrology is, is, is very useful in this world, uh, that, that, the, that the deities and the planes and stuff have power in this world, so you actually probably do a lot with divine sort of things, uh, but uh, that's not relevant to the chaos media in particular. The fact that gems and materials, the stone crafting, gems and materials are used as lenses, that would be true if it were like cracked, if you need to make a new lens, but the lenses are fine. That gem was an alternate lens, but it's basically been replaced by an even better one. Right. So, so basically she said like, oh, you can take that, I don't need any more, there's a better one there. They seem to all be in good shape, so you can't really make it better with your stone craft. I will give you a meta clue, that there is something about stone craft that might have been relevant, but you didn't get to, you didn't get to that. So, so I'll, I'll give you a little hint. There is something about Stonecraft that might uh, might help a little bit. This is an Oscar at every time. It's <laughs> <Stone? laughs> uh, The fact that Miriam was from Dimgate. Well, you have is a hammer. <laughs> the fact that Miriam's from Dimgate, true, uh, not too relevant. Uh, the fact that Miriam was at these wild parties, uh, that your identity was as a partier, that's true. I love it. It's great that you've committed to it. But as far as the meteor itself, the path of the meteor, yeah. these parties would have been the same regardless of what angle the meteor came from. The party would have happened anyway. I went to an orgy for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I'm sure I'll be used to later on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might have to go yeah. to one of these yeah, places. Yeah, I, think, so. I think you're doing it wrong. I think that was the purpose <laughs> yes. of the, uh, the uh, orgy. Um, <laughs> the fact that you're proficient in religion is true. Now, uh, general, when one person one person doing it, uh, some someone else's proficiency can't help. There are facts about the planes that may be useful, but in a weird way, it's like the fact that, that this thing that taps into the chaos realm, you could probably, it's probably more about the chaos shards. Religion is definitely worth applying to where the chaos shards go. It probably didn't change the path of the meteor. So you, mm -hmm. so what plane these things connect to probably didn't change the path of the meteor itself, which is in, in itself it's kind of interesting. It's a nice hypothesis that you know that actually doesn't matter. Okay, so now I can talk uh, after you roll. So please roll investigation with a plus four on top of everything else. All right. That's a six. Glad we got advantage. Oh, it's true. You're only with advantage. Six twice. Oh, all right. Um, all right. So you said plus four? Uh, yep, plus four on top of everything else. And it takes it to 14. 14. So it's just shy. Well, that's only the coal bolts. Or like that's something else. I don't know. Because I thought I'm like, all three of you had really high rolls. This is going to stop it. Yeah. The DC is not high enough. Oh, you oh. do your best, but. You're out. You're outside. You're nervous a lot, and as a matter of fact, just as, but as it is, you are paying so much attention to this that you all get you, you all get attacked by some by some woodland creatures <laughs> as you're out there. Okay, split up those split up those things. You're gonna have a round. Okay. You're gonna have a round of, oh, of damage. I'm what are they? Too. I feel like five these yeah, these are yeah, uh, these are wolves. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, the animal handling! Like, oh, now you can get your pet! Let's get some oh, pets! Yay! Uh, let's get some pet wolves! Let's get some die wolves! Alright, so we're going to do another quick combat. This happens when your investigation doesn't go... But the good news is, if you do the exact same investigation again, you're guaranteed success. Now, if you do it before, uh, so if you do it around the table, you're guaranteed to at least get basic success. You still roll the dice, because it might do very well, but unfortunately, you don't get any real information out of this, apart, apart from all the hypotheses and things that I recorded. So do we need to put keep this book on you guys and we do it while it's... <laughs> what? Sorry. I just uh, I've seen ores like that in the temple I grew up. Ores yes. Like okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, you know okay. orreries all like that? You know it's a perfectly good orrery, it's just that... It's real special. special. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just that you're having a hard time again, figuring, it's very complicated. <laughs> You have a hard time figuring out if you do the exact same investigation. If you do the exact same investigation again, you will be guaranteed success. But uh, but and if you do it beforehand, you might just spend stamps to, to do to, to get some more success. But you'll you, you'll make progress. Mm -hmm. also, I'm Don't give up hope. This is not going to happen next right now. Time on the shards. Yeah. So I'll do that next time. Yeah. Wolves are coming at you. Woo so uh, wolves, uh, what they what wolves love to do? They try to bite you and drag you down. This will be a strength saving throw. Uh, to resist I wolves. Okay. So split up your chips based on how fragile you feel. Now remember, yeah. you just had a long rest, so you got to think about the rest of the day. I've got twenty. Yeah, I've got twenty. Twenty-five. Now I'm going to introduce. Remember. Uh, as I said before, if you sacrifice something that can only be sacrificed once, like an item, if you give it up, or if you use a spell slot, something can only come back once per day, basically if you burn a spell slot, you get advantage on your d20. Remember that might guarantee they take out one of these wolves, and if you roll high, it'll help you roll high, if you roll very high, you might take out two wolves, you know, take less damage. So, 
using the resources versus just taking the damage mm -hmm. is now up to you. You have two hit dice to spend all day before your long rest, so losing hit points is something to consider. Okay. Let me get to my section I for have a pretty combat. Good idea. I might just use channel to finish. <laughs> Alright, we are going the opposite <laughs> ways before, so you are the first one. So Sid, what do you do? Again, be cinematic. You might get beat if you describe it in an exciting way. So, I don't have any animal handling, I don't have experience with nature, so I'm just going to go straight for an Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good old Reliable Eldritch yeah, Blast. Yeah, uh, Warlock. Yeah, All right, go for it. So, roll a d20 with your spell attack bonus. Yep. 8 plus 5, 13. 13 is just enough, Oof. man. It's hard. These wolves are fast. They're dodging through the trees. Your blast right. comes out, but it does manage to cracks through a tree and gets a wolf. Pick any wolf on the table to remove as a danger. I feel like they probably have a pack bonus. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. But I got, I, I've got the most <laughs> points, so I'm going to take out one of Buffy's, I think. Just Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so next, can Buffy, I, what are you going to take I, out these wolves? Can I try and um, tame one or nah? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is, this is cinematic hand, combat. Can I use try my animal handling? I'm not guaranteed you'll have like a permanent pet unless you will super, super oh, well. Really, really, really 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 and there's a chance. Puppy. There's a chance. I really want a puppy. So, so animal like handling, uh, yeah. I, I think this this is very clever. Uh, okay. What is your animal handling? Is it one of your better skills? Plus three. Okay, you're doing fine. I'll give you I'll give you a plus because that's very creative. All right. You get plus one on this roll. <laughs> Hope for good. At least, so you'll, at least you'll play, so you're not going to kill the wolves. That, if, okay. if you do pretty well, you'll placate one of the wolves and the wolf attack. If you do super well, you might have a wolf pet. 14. 14. 14. Plus three is 17. Mm. Plus one is 18. 18. Is that enough? There's got to be a certain threshold over that. 18 is not enough. It's not Ooh. far enough over to make a pet of it, but you do placate one of the wolves. So remove one wolf from the board. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm going to help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do that one. Okay, you placated yeah. a wolf. Good job, Buffy. Anyway. What do you do? You're very good if, with animals. What, what, time, what, 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 do you, what do you do to, to get this animal on side? I was just like, I don't know, you use my good boy face. <laughs> you're a good boy. You're a good boy. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Do you not use an arrow as a stick to chase? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking, yeah, I didn't, I didn't go that far. That's good. It's always good to do something different. That's great. Yeah. I kind of really want to see Buffy get a pet, <laughs> so I'm going to use my turn to put guidance on her to improve her role for the next oh, one. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I'll be Pick a, a cute <laughs> one. No, that's fine. I'll say I say you use your turn to what empower Buffy, so you basically give another oh, turn to somebody play. else. That was the one so that's I fine. Like, well, we'll do that. So I you use guidance. Yep. It's just yeah, a cantrip, I, I assume. Also. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So do yeah, yeah, we'll do this. I like that. So. Buffy, yeah, you get to roll it. So one. roll a d4, and this time you get to add the d4 to your d20, and you're gonna try it to. But you got, you got to, you got to. Oh, I think you do the out. next one. Okay. What? Oh, uh, yeah, what, no, that's what, fine. What? I didn't think we'd be allowed to do that. All yeah, right. yeah. So if yeah, you don't you mind, her rolling instead of yes. you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, but first you, you got, you got to act out for me. Manage. How do you get so the wolf on side? You gotta make me believe it. Okay. Oh, I don't. Oh. <laughs> do you like the toothless thing? I'm like, look away. I like. Okay, I do like to like. Crocodile Dundee, like, <laughs> I, like, yeah. but does it, like, do something with, like, a buff, like, Crocodile Dundee yeah, does something with, water with buffalo. a buffalo? <laughs> yeah. I do, like, I do that. <laughs> <It's like laughs> no yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll give you an extra point for that. Okay. okay. So what, so I'm going to Same sense. thing, animal hands, so, so you roll that first. Oh, I rolled so it first. So you got three plus, so you're going to add four, so bring that on here, we'll put it on the middle, make it dramatic. Okay. So now you got four points to add your animal handling again. So roll a d20, animal handling again, but next time you add four to it. Come on. Get high enough to get a wolf pet. Ooh. 14. 14. Still? Plus still? You're adding more? Plus, so plus 14 plus 4. 14, 18 plus 3 is 21. 21. Is, is that, that enough? It is! Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are we going to call it? Well, it's yours. So like <laughs> Buffy gets a wolf pet. Oh, I don't know what to do. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, now. Your wolf pet is a follower, <laughs> but every day okay. you're gonna have to do this check again, and eventually okay. it uh, might turn on you, I or at least run away. Uh, <laughs> but for today, <laughs> you got a wolf pet for a day. But if every day, if you make it a priority, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get that wolf back on board, <laughs> you can. Okay. Every day, okay. you got a wolf pet. Uh, there is continue animal. It'll do what a wolf does, and that it'll consider you a friend and your friends a friend. You've trained it well enough that it won't attack your friends. Aside from that, it's pretty much random. Should you a ranger. Your only your, your real orders are like. Let it go to do as wolf, and maybe if you call it back, like stop attacking that thing, you'll roll animal handling to get it to stop, right? Okay. So basically, you've got a wolf that that's 
verging on a pet, but it yeah. won't be able to do tricks unless you really work okay. on it. Like yeah. every day I, that you yeah. keep it on board, yeah. you have a chance to, to, am, to teach I new am, tricks. Yeah, I'm going to feed it every day. <laughs> I'm going to pick up its poo every day. Okay, so you guys take out for a walk every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the start of the follower. So you actually have follower system. So if you succeed a couple times, it might become a, lo a permanent follower, oh. and you can start to level it up by spending oh. session stamps and stuff. So yeah, this could be great. Okay, good job. Yes. Uh -huh. But you also remove, this wolf is now off. So, so Yeah, I already removed. You put it in. Okay, great. Okay. How many wolves are left? Um, Who's got a wolf on them? Two on you, one on you. Yeah, still quite a few wolves. Okay, I guess so then I'll just. Hmm. So. Sorry, the Elder Splash took out one. Just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one of these guys. Yeah. And then oh, push in the middle end. Hmm? So so push. Uh, so which Those ones? So those ones are the ones that are taken ones out. Ones when I killed one of them. Okay. The pack, so yeah, so they're taken out, put them right in the middle if they're taken out. Put oh, them okay. next oh, to yours. Put, put, yeah, put them on the edge if they're on you. Yeah. Okay. So the Elder Splash took out one. One, yeah. Your first and animal then, handling yeah. took out one. Oh, okay, so oh. I have another one that's a Your second, your oh, second, so second animal handling took out one. Oh, okay. Who should I tell? Who should I tell? Anybody. So you push anybody's in. That's good. It saves me from getting attacked from that one then. Right. Okay, put it in the middle, please. Oh, yes. Because we recharge. Because sometimes there's multiple rounds. All right. I'm Does that one go back in the middle? The she's DM this. keeping it as a, like if it's a follow-up. Uh, yeah, if we do a second round, we would have one fewer chip. Okay. Yes. <laughs> where is there a place where like they can all like pretty much see me? Uh, yeah. I mean, just paint us a picture. So yeah. Like, so you don't have to logically okay. think cinematically. Taunt them all. I walk into the middle. And yes. I hide it. I hold out my holy symbol. Yeah. And I like say my patron's name, which is Sirion. God yeah. of fire and change. Yes. I ask you to help. And then there's like a bit of like a flame aura around me. Oh. Like channeling divinity. Yeah. Making the cre all creatures 30 feet around me that can see me. Um, they have to throw wisdom saving throws. And for one, and if they fail for one minute, um, and, or until it takes damage, they're charmed by you. Wow, that's very appropriate. Okay, th this is very special. Now, this is a channel divinity. Could you get this back only once yeah. per long rest? No, I, it's. Oh, I think it's cool. uh, no, short. So starting at second rest. level, you can use your channel divinity to charm animals and plants. Yeah. As your action, you put. Yeah. Blah. Yeah, usually, at the I end, it says how do you get it back. Anyway. Yeah, saving throw its charm divinity for one minute until it takes damage. Here, let me read because yeah. usually it's at the bottom. It says when it comes back. Um, mm. I don't have the page I screenshotted it, so that's just that's a fine. photo. Yeah, somebody look up channel divinity. I think yeah. channel divinity yeah. is so. If you, to, you can still take about your decision. I haven't like, used any spells, so yeah. like, I'm I think only get a certain number of times a day. Mm -hmm. if I, I yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's once per, and I'm pretty sure it's any rest, but I'm just oh, okay. I'm fine to take it for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. That is awesome, though. You described it very well. So I'm going to give you a, a plus two, just because that's a perfect description. Mm -hmm. You're still going to use a spell attack bonus, because so even though normally it's a saving throw, I turn simple combat just into a d20. Mm -hmm. Just okay, try to simplify so it. So you're, again, your spell attack bonus so on that. Plus seven total. Yeah, and I'm assuming that, that uh, so confirm that Channel Divinity comes back on a short rest, which means it's not as much of a sacrifice as, as something for a long rest. But it's a great uh, You story, must then so finish a short or long rest to use your Channel Divinity. So yeah. Okay, rest. great. Okay. Fine. Okay, yeah. great. So very useful. That's why I get the play very well described. Plus two. Okay. If it works, it will work very well. That's a 16 nice. plus the 7, so that will be 23. 23! Yeah. All of the wolves are charmed by you. Yeah. Push it all in. I tell them to go to the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Drink, go back like home. Canceled the go home. <laughs> Push it all home. in. I, just, I basically tell them to go home. <laughs> yeah, go you home. And, yours, and yours is actually even more yeah. impressive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're oh, have I stopped yeah. on her? Tell her to stay. Oh, he exactly. stays. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. Okay, very good. Well, you none of you have to do saving throws. All the wolves are taken care of. Very good. Okay, that turned out all right. Yeehaw. Yay! <laughs> okay. Can't wait. Now, do mark it off just for the oh, short yeah, rest, yeah. but for whatever reason, you don't have a short rest. So mark it off just a temporarily thing that you've lost for short rest. But, but that's great. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Perfect time to use it. It was. That yes, was ideal. I've been really waiting nice. to leave the caves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at you shine. Okay, Let's we've done that. We've done that. Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't think it was against the rule book. It's only like 33 feet away from me. So we were going to like twist it, but. Wait, Perfect. We were time staying together okay. while we were looking at your eyes. So. They probably, I probably was drawing them That's around true. me. They're probably, probably were like two inches <laughs> close to biting my neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Chill>. great. <laughs> Because okay. Like, I'm sure they like have like a pack or something. They're just wolves. That's why I thought I'm like, I bet they have like pack attack things if 
that close yeah. together. It was. I'm, well, yeah. I'm yeah, like, this is a pack I won't say why, but, 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 but one of the yeah. whammies was pack attack. Yeah. Was, was pack tactics. I like this tactics. looks like it would be a what pack attack. What do you think it would have been? How do you think it would have made that happen? I think you could take it. Just like, like a double bonus, like there's the advantage. They both attack yeah. you. So yeah. if somebody had two wolves on them, they would they would have they would have. That's what I was you, suggesting. You would have like, like, down to one wolf on everyone. You, you would have saved, yeah. you would have had to save with disadvantage the, on both of those wolves yeah. if there were two of them. The, I mean, like, best thing I've got the most hit points here, so was, if the wolves I was the one to take it. Ah, yeah. very brave. But also like we have some pretty decent ACs. Yeah. But I mean like, they're rolling with advantage and getting disadvantage on strength thing. Okay, let me wrap this up. We can talk more at the pub. So so anybody else coming to another world, you're always welcome to. Uh, or talk afterwards here, but we'll make sure to make sure people want to go on time. A few things to wrap up. XP. So you've gotten, th uh, so you get another 25 XP. Again, you know, this kind of combat is not super high risk and it's quick, so you get 25 XP for this kind of combat and also that all that uh, exploration you did. So I believe you've gotten 100 XP total. So I guess it's going to be four batches of 25. Okay, that, that should total correctly. Okay. okay. Which is still pretty respectable. Combat, you'll get more, but of course you learned a lot and you, had, and you got loot and uh, not very high risk. Uh, so remember what you've learned. Remember knowledge is power. So now you've got more hooks. A lot of things you can't do much about until you're done with sort of epic one, but you can still mention these things. Anytime you do investigation, maybe before play or if we do another round like this, we'll do, a, we'll do this whole thing again at least once as you try to figure out how to, how to solve the epic one problem. And all of these things you've learned might be useful in some way, but also it's just kind of fun to know. Remember this stuff when you come to the pub uh, because you can hear all kinds of stories now and share and trade information. You already know things that nobody else has ever learned just because of the way the dice go and your choices go. Mm -hmm. So the things I like, even you know, I've been doing this for s at least seven years and seven totally different groups. Some of you know some things that nobody's ever learned before. So it's really fun to share that because see how things look is like I've never heard that. All right. Oh my um, <laughs> I don't think anybody's tamed a wolf before. That's also a first. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> That's a classic D&D thing that for whatever reason hasn't happened in Courage and Chaos till now. Have you looked uh, at a ranger class? Because <laughs> they get to have yeah. pets and they basically use oh, archery. Oh, really? And it's like a yeah. full, do like, you, it will follow you your commands. You can turn into a yeah. ranger. Do you, if you, when you, look, you, 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 you can yeah. level up what's called a uh, multi-class. So if, so if I level up, can I, like, keep the wolf You'd have a better chance if you're a ranger to have oh, a pet. Yeah. Okay. Level yeah, three, yeah. you get a companion in Right. And you're like good at like tracking animals, yeah. and so it's just like it's so like you can become yeah. like a level one fighter plus a level one ranger. It's kind of a nice combination. It's called multi-classing. Oh, okay. It makes it a little more complicated. So you definitely want to use D and D Beyond or the Player's Handbook, and really yeah. you want to work on it. Yeah, yeah. It could be an ambition that you have. You know, you could do yeah. that later. You yeah, can say, oh, I'll be a second level like based on paper. You could be a second level fighter like you are now, and then when you but level I up yet again, good. then you add a level of ranger, oh. and that might be the time. You know, then you'd be a level one ranger. You don't get your animal companion, but we'll work it in somehow. You know, if okay. you have this wolf as a follower that'll be your preview for this one okay options for next time so now the paths open up again now as you probably figured out all the paths that were open at the beginning they're still open to you and they're getting narrower yeah. uh, but you're gathering enough information that you're going to get ready to solve the epic one problem which is what's organizing the goblins why are they there and how do we stop it so you've done the silver path right people use the silver visors and blast their eyes and you discovered this person with silver mask uh, is behind some things that's the silver path that you've temporarily gotten the end of Good job. What remains is the red path and the goblin path. The red path is Torg said to the about the, the trap door, join us for the strong treasure power. Join us. And he tapped his chest, the red epaulette, you know, with that particular shade of red and a particular shape that you know is associated with the reds, which you don't know as much about, but also Torg is, you know, on side. Remember you kind of shook Torg's faith. One of the most important things you did in episode two was you rolled so high at such a critical time. I, I, I have to look at my records on exactly how it happened. Torg really came to doubt. Oh, was that final sort of heel at the end? Like mm -hmm. Torg got, somebody got stabilized in front of Torg and rolled a natural 20 and Torg kind of had this revelation like. Just saving back. Yuki, yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. Yuki, and and so, yeah. Unnamed. Yeah. And so it got, it, and so Torg just basically See, you saw a doubt in Torg's eyes, like maybe I'm working for the wrong people. Maybe you are the kind of people that I need to pay more attention to. But he still is a faithful Red, and he's kind of gone back to his script somewhat, though. You know, you can get him back on side. His default is as a good Red soldier, but you see doubt in his eyes that you never saw before. He still thinks, go down and you know, join us, or he also adds, like, find out more. It's the first time, instead of just join us and very much through the company line, 
he has sort of like a pleading, like, find out what happened. And he has a concerned look in his eyes. You know, that he had a, tr a moment of tragedy at one point, and it'll be up to you to remember, but at one point he got very tragic about something. And he has that same look on his face, which is find out what happened. So he's saying that for the first time. That's the part of the red path as well. Remember, you'll probably want to do both of these eventually, right? So, so it's just which do you want to do next? What sounds like the most fun is uh, next is the red path is a dungeon crawl. You uh, you have combat, but you also have like traps and puzzles tend to happen in a dungeon. You also kind of have to do it at a run. It's fairly linear. If you don't complete it and you back off, you know then the dungeon fills back up again. So it takes some endurance. You want to be more carefully than usual decide on you know what you do. You'll probably be able to do a. Uh, you've already done a long rest, so you're fairly well charged up for that. The other one is Goblin Path. Uh, as I described before, you can stay outside. You can chase the <laughs> goblins down. You'll cover more ground this way. You'll, it's more emphasis of, of just classic D&D combat, of maybe a bit more epic combat, of certainly of the, of the crunchier variety. Uh, but you'll find out more about what's motivating the goblins, maybe. You'll find out more about you know, uh, where they come from and what their goals are. And also, you just feel like heroes. You're going to be maybe saving villages and stopping ambushes and stuff like that. So a bit more high adventure that way. Uh, both of them, you know. Uh, uh, this was just a couple sessions, so you're not committing to a lifetime on either of these things, just where you want to give a taste to. You can do a third thing, so while you're discussing this amongst yourselves, and if you want to leave at nine, that's fine. The only thing left is the vote, um, and donations, and, uh, and uh, encouraging you to come back and give you stamps and all that stuff. Filling out your, your feedback forms, please. Um, but consider a debate with each other your vote on what you want to do. And I'll listen in, and I'll stop the video so that I can start the final transfer. Did you say that was a third option? Uh, only, the, almost all of your third options say, oh, that's a great idea for Epic 2. But as you're discussing, feel free to say what really motivates you. I'll make okay. more notes about what motivates you. But probably it's at your current level strength, the Red Path and the Goblin Path are probably best. D&D mm -hmm. gets much less restrictive as they go. But okay. right now, it's, you're, you're okay. in a you're okay. fairly narrow channel. I hope you enjoyed watching us teach Dungeons & Dragons to absolute beginners. Want to know more about how we do it? Then support our nonprofit mission. Unlock extensive how to videos and use the Courage and Chaos method yourself by using free materials that we provide. You can get all that at the link that you see here. That is tinyearl.com slash teachdd, or you can click that link in the description. Of course, please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to come out with these videos every two weeks in this series, so I will see you again soon.